the Board of Selectmen's meeting back into session. Uh, we just came out of an executive session where we uh, talked about the uh, and dealt with the police chief contract, the new police chief, and also um, uh, the manager's union uh, contract. Um, so with that, would you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, weekly briefing. Bill. Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I will just comment for the, the library that I was over there Saturday, and the new carpeting looks terrific. Good. They've got about half of it done, and it just looks outstanding. And once you look at the, if you had the opportunity to go over and see the old carpeting next to the new carpeting, boy, did it need it. But it's a terrific job, and it looks great. Okay. Chief Jessely, I know you do. Uh, good, ev good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just real quick, uh, I thought it was important that I come in. It, it's, uh, we had two unusual situations within seven days of house fires that, were, that caused significant damage uh, in both occasions. And they were both caused by grills. One was charcoal and one was uh, uh, propane. It's just the message I'm, I'm trying to get out uh, to the folks is that take, it's great that you, know, you want a grill and all, but the grills should not be up against the house. And I don't want to sound demeaning, but let's inje inject a little common sense here. These families have lost their homes, and uh, that's a tragic thing. Thank God no one was hurt. Uh, none of the firefighters were injured, but significant damage. One will probably have to be torn down, and the other thousands and thousands worth of dollars worth of damage. So I asked the folks at home to please be vigilant, have a good time, Take your grills and get them away from your houses. If you're on the, on the decks, get them away from the houses because twice in one week, uh, people have lost their homes. And that's, that's a terrible, terrible thing. Chief, is there a um, standard distance that you, or minimum distance that you would suggest or people suggest like four feet or something or eight I, feet? I, I'm going to say, you know, 10 to 20 feet. You need okay. to get the, your the grills. Further the better. About you, it, they, you know, it's fire. It's right. fire in a box. Right. And, okay. uh, when, when uh, these Cape Cod homes have the cedar shingles, and that both occasions these, these were cedar shingles, and uh, uh, the, sh the shingles are real dry. We haven't had a lot of rain. Believe it or not, your houses do get dry, right. uh, but a considerable distance. You know, I have a small deck on the back of my house. It's a 10 by 10 deck. Well, the grill is on the, on the far side of the deck. Uh, so common sense, and uh, uh, please get these grills away from the houses. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else on the weekly briefing? Go ahead, Ann. Stand up the mic. You have a question for the chief? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. It's okay. Does it make any difference if you have vinyl siding? Probably worse. <laughs> uh, it does. That'll burn quicker. <laughs> yeah, it melts. Yeah. It's a plastic. Vinyl is plastic, and it will it, anything you believe it or not. Yeah, shingles or vinyl, uh, it, it will burn. Just keep it away from your house. It's the best thing to That's do. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Change it. I see you out there. Now you probably want to talk about carpeting. Yes, I do. Just came to give you a quick update. I'm Ginny Hewitt from Brooks Library. Um, first week of carpeting went great last week. Um, we're on to the second week. We're on the first floor. So I just wanted to stop by and remind people that if you might watch this on TV that the library is closed tomorrow and Wednesday. And then we should be open on Thursday. Uh, we don't expect any issues. It's looking really nice. Good. Yeah. And also, um, I want to thank the public last week. Was, it was pretty disruptive with different parts of the building not being available all the time. And um, no, no public computers, and that's hard for people. But anyway, um, people were good about it and understood. Um, and our staff has been really good about pitching in and doing all the different things. But um, I also really want to thank highway because um, link but Sean um, Sean Libby the facilities manager has had West Langway there pretty much full-time and that's been extremely helpful when things come up that need to be moved and also that's been awesome Great. so thank you and thank you Chris you mentioned it last week um, 
I thought about it at 6.15 and I didn't get over here. So thank you for announcing that. So, so just uh, really two more, two days are being closed and then the public shouldn't be impacted much after that. All right, great. Thank you, yeah, Jane. Thank you. All right. Any other weekly briefings? Move on to public comments or announcements? Buddy? Mr. Urbano, I can only imagine what you're going to tell us tonight. <laughs> How Mr. are you, Ch sir? Mr. Ch today, fine. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Chairman? I'm great. I uh, wanted to uh, give a little update on what transpired this weekend. First, let me start by saying that uh, we drove towards a selectman and administrator type of weekend where they would come to the Alboro House and paint. Now, let me just step back for a second. In my mind, what I thought was I was going to get a couple of people who were going to really pretend to do a lot of work. That's, and so I was prepared for that. That's not what I got. Um, I got first on Saturday, David Spitz came and scraped his heart out. Uh, it was just incredible. And we worked about four hours. We went home, and I went, what have I done? We're never going to get done. My whole summer, every weekend, I'm going to be at the Albra House working. I've just given up my summer. Well, Sunday came along at 10 o'clock. Sally and I are there. And the first people to show were Linda, Hugh, Linda Sabula and her husband, Robert. And they didn't come to do a show and tell. They came to work. And I guess maybe in some ways I gave them the toughest part. I said, oh, why don't you just start on the porch? Which was probably the messiest part. And you know, they got right to it and kept coming to me and asking, what else can I do? And beyond that, they also contributed very generously. So I can't thank them. Then. Two minutes after Linda shows up, Peter shows up. And Linda, his wife, shows up. He doesn't even say hello. He starts taking his ladder off the truck, getting his little scraper out there. And you know, if I were just five or 10 years younger, I might even be able to keep up with you, Peter. But he just went through it. It's unbelievable how much was accomplished. Anybody can go over there and look. I would say from a scraping perspective alone, about 50% of the house is done, if not more. Um, it's amazing. Now, also, I'm going to stop right there before I go on. If you go and look at the house, it's just basically primered, so it's not complete. Give it time. It's going to look good. Because uh, each and every person that was there, uh, including, I might add, the one person that I never thought was going to show, Mr. Chris Clark. I don't know why he didn't think he was going to show. Because he lives so far away. He drove. I mean, said he, it'd show up. you know, I mean, four hours or six hours for him. I said it'd show up. <laughs> so he really, he, Chris showed up. And again, there wasn't any hello, how are you? Wasn't any playing around with the selectmen and talking. He said, okay, I'm willing to do the high parts. Give me the ladder. And got up there and again started scraping it. And then he wanted to see what it was going to look like when his part was done. So he had to paint that to see what it would look like. So I'm truly amazed. And then uh, who else showed up? Dana. Dana showed up. And Dana, you know, he uh, worked close to me, which is pretty dangerous because I like to paint, but about 50% of it falls on me and surrounding areas. So uh, he's meticulous. No paint on him at all that he caused. Yeah, but he I only did an area this big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no, he was also very helpful. Anyhow, I'm I'm rejuvenated, and we also had Dorothy's son-in-law, yep. Mark. He came and brought scrapers, went out and got some iced tea. So when I got home, and I you know, we stayed a long time because Sally and I sat and just watched what was done after everybody left, and went, we actually are going to get done. So uh, we're going to take a break. Next week, and, now, and also, I, I know I'm taking a lot of time, Peter, so throw something at me. Hurry up. Our two, okay. Our two newest selectmen have also volunteered uh, to come and paint, and also they're collecting some money for us, and it's incredible. It really is. Oh, Angelo, I'm not going to Well, I can leave Angelo out. <laughs> we all know Angelo likes to help in quiet. Uh, 
Angelo was very generous. So, I, I, I think, Lou, that the best advertisement now is um, the fact that you've got some of the building painted. Yep. I'm sure you're going to start getting some comments on the colors, which I'm sure we can all push back on the historical group about <laughs> as are the colors. I, I will, you know, it's interesting, the old Pam Black House on uh, 28 in oh. South Harwich, mm -hmm. if you look at that beautiful. color, it's almost the same, at least the, um, that mustard color, whatever. Yep. I don't know what you call it. I have a name for that color, yeah, we but do. I can't okay. say it. You know, but I think you know when people start seeing some progress like that, then you'll have some folks saying, "Hey, how do I get involved?" So, well, it's good. We have signs coming up in the um, town hall downstairs. We have in the in the community center, and also one more thing, I found a new fundraising effort. Uh, anyone that has their picture in here that helps, if you want it out, it'll cost you fifty dollars. If you want your picture off the website that we're going to put the pictures on, that's a hundred dollars. So, <laughs> has everybody seen these? No. Uh, hopefully, can I approach? Sure. You're going to any house. So. <laughs> well, it's always good to ask. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you should look. Let's sit around. Okay. So anything else you need from us? We're going to officially, hopefully, vote yep. to adopt your plan here pretty soon. But one, one thing, Peter. Halfway done. On the twenty seventh, we're not going to do any work Father's Day weekend, so please, no volunteers show up. Uh, the following week, the twenty seventh and twenty eighth, that's a Saturday, Sunday, between the hours of ten till two, and we might have a surprise on who's going to help those weekend or that weekend. So uh, I'll wait for our next election meeting to make Yeah, I suggest you, you might put a sign on one of the doors this week just saying, you know, you're not doing anything this weekend in case anybody shows up or walks by or something. And, and I know we all like challenges. The next challenge is to get 8 to 10 people there working that are less than 50 years old, 50 and under. How's that for a challenge? <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else for uh, public comment and announcements? That was quite the announcement. And thank you again for, for your efforts. We applaud them. Okay, let's move on to the consent agenda. Um, I'd like to take the, the May 11th and 18 minutes first. Um, Mr. Chair, I Linda. make a motion that we accept the May 11th, 2015 regular meeting and May 18th, 2015 executive session minutes. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to accept those minutes. I'll just point out that. Um, uh, since Janelle and Michael weren't uh, members of the board at that point, that's why we're taking them separately. Okay, so the three of us will deal with it. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? To vote, thank you. Would you like to move the rest of the consent agenda or what would you like to do? Someone? I didn't hear what you said. I said would someone like to move the, the balance of the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the June 9th, 2015 interview subcommittee minutes. Approve the fiscal year 16 committee reappointments. Approve fiscal year 16 miscellaneous appointments. Approve fiscal year 16 annual police appointments. Approve the plan for volunteering painting of the Albro House. Approve new common. Victulers. Victuler. Victuler. Application for Scribano's Italian Market and Deli. Approve catch basin contract extension and approve vacation carryover for town administrator. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to um, approve the consent agenda as read. Discussion? Uh, Angela. Just a comment on the committee reappointments. Uh, what these are are the reappointment of people who uh, have been on committees and who wanted <coughs> to stay on committees. They receive a letter and, and they're asked what they would like to do. And uh, this year, uh, we reappointed everyone who uh, said they wished to be reappointed. Uh, that's it. That's okay. what that group is. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. We have no public hearings or presentations. Old business. Wastewater, I changed it. You'll notice I changed the uh, wastewater moment that I had advocated for to be wastewater educational moment. Uh, to make it more clear that our intent is to um, provide education materials as we go forward on, on wastewater. And this week, we, I asked Paula uh, Champagne to come in, our health director, um, to give us some information on what septic systems are and how they work and, and what they do or don't do to, to uh, help us with nitrogen. Um, 
and maybe a few other things that she has on her website. So Paula, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for taking the time with us this evening. Thank you. Hopefully the computer will work and the screen will come up. Now oh, here it goes. It's getting there. Well, uh, the presentation tonight may seem a little bit rudimentary to a lot of us that have been working on the committees for several years. It's always important to remember that every year we have a certain percentage of new residents in town and our visitors. And for the first time, it's probably the first time that they've ever had a septic system. So um, it's important that as we go forward on this, on this discussion that we're all going to be having the next several years that we understand, we all um, understand a little bit more about septic systems 101, what's out in your backyard, what it does, what it doesn't do and um, hopefully answer a few uh, questions and dispel a few myths. Uh, septic System 101, if you live on the Cape, about 90% of us all have this, some form of this out in our backyard. Um, and that is, I, I can relate a lot of stories about early in my career, someone calling and saying, I needed to send out the DPW because the pipe had burst out in their backyard not even knowing that they had a sewer, that we weren't on a sewer, that they had a septic system. So this is a conversation that we have frequently as to uh, where the, where the uh, mystery of what goes down the drain. It goes into your backyard. Uh, we are on our own, we have our own private utility in our backyard called a septic system. The history of septic systems, there's a history for everything. Uh, if you grew up in the city, um, hundreds of years ago, the preferred method of disposal was to take the chamber pot and throw it out the uh, window into the street, into the catch basin. So if, if you've had the opportunity to travel through Europe and lovely old villages, mm -hmm. um, we are very lucky that we weren't traveling around those same lovely cities two or three hundred years ago. The stench was unbearable. Disease uh, was a very common way of life. Um, the, the, as I say, the, the slop buckets, everything went out into the sewer. The little boy looking at what looks like some lovely pottery, there's actually a chamber pot museum. A chamber pot was a <laughs> fixture in every household and uh, those, those are not soup terrines. That is a chamber pot museum. Then if you were lucky enough to get out of the city, uh, you had that modern convenience out in the backyard. Uh, known as the outhouse. The early systems were called cesspools. It was a one-size-fits-all, um, and we actually can find historic references back to the 1400s of the first cesspools being installed. They were originally just holding pits. They did not leach, and so people came and cleaned them out. The old, you know, if you hear references to night soil, that's what they were coming in and cleaning out the muck from the cesspool. Uh, they were widely used until the 1960s, and at that time we went to our more modern convenience of the septic tank, which separates, which is some rudimentary um, settling and separation of the waste. There's actually a patent for a septic tank. It was issued in the 1880s in France. Um, but as you'll see and learn to understand, there really hasn't been a whole lot of advancement in the way that we treat our waste if we're talking about septic tanks and septic systems. Uh, this is what's called the old beehive cesspool. There's still a lot of these on Cape Cod. Uh, we are blessed on Cape Cod with beautiful, beautiful soils and a uh, septic system can last, you know, I've, I've seen cesspools 100 years old because of our wonderful sandy soils. The object of a septic tank septic system is to take the waste out of the house and put it into the ground. It was a great public health achievement mm -hmm. which took the waste off the street, removed disease, and put it underground. It doesn't do a heck of a lot more than that. There is very little reduction in chemistry, very little reduction in pollutants. Our current Title V, you'll hear Title V, that's the code reference for the State Sanitary Code in Massachusetts which is our code of regulation for the design and installation of septic systems. So Title V is, is the lingo. A current Title V septic system is really a two component system. The waste lines, the sewer lines come out of your house from all of your different fixtures. 
feed into a main sewer line that then goes into the septic tank. A septic tank is a 1,500 gallon tight concrete box, which is a settling system. From there, it is watertight. From there, it feeds on gravity. Uh, the effluent from that uh, septic tank will then go into a distribution box, which will then distribute, disperse it into some sort of a leaching facility, which then trickles down into the ground. It is, uh, that, that's it, it's, it's very simple. It is gravity fed, unless you have issues with groundwater and you need a pump or um, trying to pump the um, effluent to another portion of your property. Very, very simple system. A septic tank, how does it work? Again, it's a, it's a 1,500 tight concrete box. All of the waste comes in. It's designed, the scientific design to this is that a drop of water going into the septic system will take about 24 hours to travel through the system and go out. A septic tank is, is on dispersion. Um, five gallons in are five gallons out. It's, it's, a, it's a very um, non-mechanical system. The time that it spends in the septic tank, this is a microbiological system. Mm -hmm. The uh, microbes in there will break down solids, soaps, grease, there will be, it's food for the bacteria, it's a biological system, it's not a mechanical system. And in the presence of oxygen, we'll transfer some of the components, mostly just to a stable situation. There is virtually no reduction in chemicals, um, pollutants that go in, which is why we try to train people not to put their medications, um, oils, turpentine, gasoline, things like that shouldn't go into your septic system because this is just a conduit for it to go into the groundwater. So that's how a septic tank works. Uh, the sludge builds up on the bottom of the tank, settles out. It, the siphons come out of the liquid range. The scum, the oils are on top. Uh, one of the questions was, where do the soap bubbles go? Where does the grease go? It's right here in this, in this chamber. And um, it is the the effluent that then gets carried off to the um, leaching facility. So, Paul, just so I had that, that slide up there, people often ask the question, how often or when should I get my system pumped or when do I need to pump it? You should pump What's your the system. indication sort of thing to them or is there an indication to them? You should pump your system uh, every three to five years. Okay. And the pumper will tell you whether, oh, you waited too long or what's a good cycle. Even if you, there are studies that have come out in the past year that, that's, that say, oh, I didn't, the solids didn't build up, I was there weekends for 10 years. Well, the solids may not have built up, but it's turned into cement, and you're going to pay more for them to come back in with the backhoe, and not the backhoe, excuse me, to pressure wash. They cannot get the solids out. It will turn very, very solid, in, and um, it's very difficult to pump the system. So for good maintenance, every three to five years. And how about some of these, I'll just call them chemicals or things, additives that people either talk about or they sell that you can supposedly put in your, you know, just dump it down the drain and something magic happens in your septic tank? Um, something magic will happen. About the only thing that we would recommend or uh, not have an issue if you were using something biologic. Some people feel as though they must add biologics to their system. It's really not necessary. There is so much bacteria going into the septic system from all of the daily uses that it usually has enough bacteria to keep it going. Okay, so it really um, doesn't do any good. It really doesn't do any stuff. good. Uh, there are biological and enzymes that are added in commercial facilities that help to reduce the amount of, of sludge and fat and grease yeah, build up. Okay. It's not necessary in a, in a residential situation. Okay. Thank you. And we definitely do not advocate using any of the degreasers that yeah. were common years ago. Again, those have been shown to pollute uh, quite a bit of groundwater. Okay. Your soil absor absorption system, most of the systems now are uh, perf pipe or very shallow systems which are high to the surface. Uh, this changed in 1995. Previous to that, most of you will have a six foot leaching pit surrounded with stone, uh, a catch basin type system out there. Uh, which, which had very, very long lives, again, in our wonderful soil. But it was found that keeping the systems higher to the ground does help with some evapotranspiration. 
So most of, most of your leaching facilities, again, this is a conduit to get it from the septic tank into the ground and dispersed, are these flat pipe and stone systems, or you may see some plastic chambers. So your septic system treatment features, again, it's designed for public health. It, it is an excellent feature. It was one of the vanguard moments in, in public health and history, taking the sewage off of the sidewalk and putting it in the ground where uh, we were able to eliminate a lot of disease. It's not designed for environmental health purposes, and that's the reason why we're having problems with our estuaries and our ponds. Um, it, there's very minimal treatment. It's only primary settling. There's limited chemical removal and reduction. The um, septic systems, uh, if they're located in good soil, such as ours, the area below the leaching facility is very good for bacterial removal. Again, a lot of your public health factors. Get the sewage off the street, it does eliminate uh, bacteria. Most bacteria, if given four or five feet of good, clean soil, most of the bacteria will be removed and a lot of the viruses. But nothing for um, chemicals. We're seeing a lot of studies in groundwater. We're seeing a lot of um, drugs, the pharmaceuticals, the endocrine disruptors showing up in our groundwater. A lot of the chlorinated hydrocarbons from the years of uh, use into our septic systems. Minimal amounts, but it's still making our way into our groundwater. Oh, just so you had that slide up there, the previous one. Sorry. Um, would you just explain what a perk test is? So, because that's another phrase that some people probably don't know, but you hear it a lot. Perk test. Okay, a perk test. That is the start of needing to put in a new septic system. It's called a percolation te test or a deep hole test. That's if you need to have a new septic system put onto your property, you make an appointment with us, your engineer. We go out and do the soil and site suitability. There is a 10-foot hole done with a backhoe, measuring the distance to groundwater, and also doing a soil stratification to make sure that there isn't any clay or peat or um, soils that will not accept a leaching facility. And, what, and what's your minimum uh, distance to groundwater? The code requires five feet below the bottom of the leaching facility to the maximum adjusted groundwater. Okay, thank you. Uh, some of the issues that we're dealing with, with wastewater issues and the need to uh, take care of are nitrogen and phosphorus coming from the septic systems. There is very, very minimal reduction in nitrogen and virtually no reduction in phosphorus. And this is what drives our uh, ecological systems. Mm -hmm. uh, think of nitrogen and phosphorus just as you do on your lawn, they're fertilizer. But in the environment, it is called the uh, limiting factor. It's, it's the food that makes the algae um, have a holiday. And in salt water, it is nitrogen. Nitrogen is what sets off, what tips the balance in the ecosystem and causes algae blooms and in our freshwater environments, it's phosphorus. That's very important to know the difference. You're not gonna treat uh, nitrogen around a freshwater pond if you're having huge algae blooms and vice versa. You need, so you need to apply the technology and the treatment uh, properly in those areas. Nitrogen removal, ammonia, where does it come from uh, in your septic system? The nitrogen <coughs> comes from ammonia, which is in the biological waste. The ammonia in the septic system is stabilized through oxygenation and is converted to nitrates. Once the, all of the ammonia is converted to nitrates, it's very stable in the environment. And again, we put this wonderful conduit so that it leaches down into our groundwater, makes its way into our groundwater, and travels with the groundwater until it immerses in another water body system. Domestic wastewater, the literature will show you that uh, coming out of a uh, septic system is about 35 to 40 milligrams per liter of nitrates. A septic system, um, uh, the CDM report gave a very generous 20% reduction. That's pretty high, you usually read a lot about 10, 15%, but even so, it's still, you're still only reducing that uh, nitrogen down to somewhere in the 30 range. Um, the, our comprehensive wastewater management plan illustrates that we need to move 70 to 100% of the nitrates from septic system 
and our coastal embayments to return those to fresh, productive um, environments. What does that mean? What do those numbers mean when you keep hearing about all of that nitrate? Our drinking water standards, the EPA drinking water standard is 10 milligrams per liter of nitrates. If you have more than that in a, a water supply, it's unsuitable for drinking water. On the Cape, through our years and years of testing, we know that the background level, the unaffected level in our, in our aquifer is less than one part per million. So even if we start to see if we, we're tracking water supplies and we're starting to see five, six, you know you're still below the EPA number, but you also know that you've influenced it mm -hmm. from agriculture or septic systems, runoff, whatever. In the marine environment, less than one milligram per liter. It's, you have a very sensitive environment and what you need before you start upsetting the balance there. And that's because um, animals, water life are living in that environment versus drinking. So the, the um, upsetting the balance is very critical. Linda. Question back. If the ammonia has been stabilized and converted to nitrates, why is it still a problem? Um, it is the nitrates which are then used by the plants which can convert it back to nitrogen. I was just asking the question to make sure that as we talk about newcomers to septic systems, when you use a word like stabilization, and then why, does it, why is it still a problem if you've stabilized it? So it's because the plants convert it back and then you get the... Yes, yes. Um, this is from the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, which just shows that they are attributing Title V systems only reduced 20 percent. You need to go all the way over to the right-hand corner for package and central treatment plants, which are effective at removing 90 percent of the nitrogen. And then they've looked at the different embayments, saying how much nitrogen they need to remove to get back to a healthy environment. Uh, there was a question about what about composting toilets? If you're not releasing that into the environment, isn't that going to solve all of our problems? Um, some people think that we should be promoting composting toilets. I think composting toilets have a place in society. I don't think that the place, uh, according to public opinion, is in everyone's home right now. It's not really a mainstream kind of uh, technology. I'm sure we've all seen them in the, in the uh, national parks, visitor centers, et cetera. Uh, first of all, it is what, exactly what it says. It's a toilet uh, that uh, reduces the amount of, of water flow. There's virtually no water going into a system. It's not being carried out into a septic system. Uh, this is a, a, this system requires a a large holding tank usually in the in the basement where you are composting your own waste in your home it takes probably um, you can it depends what model you use how much oxygen if you put heat through there but usually you do have a compostable product uh, in a, in a year or two that uh, you do have to clean this out it is not a zero discharge there is still a liquid waste uh, and it's a very concentrated, highly concentrated um, waste product that's still liquid waste product that still needs to be taken care of. There's usually a smaller holding tank that needs to be uh, pumped and removed uh, about once a year. So a composting toilet uh, is an excellent idea when you have no access to water, conventional type of a system. Um, it does require um, someone to take care of it, to go in and clean out that compost on a regular basis. The compost itself, again, is, is usually in a form that people will use it in their, in their gardens, and, and uh, I don't recommend that it be used for vegetables because, again, if people in that household are, are taking a lot of pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceuticals will show up in the compost. Um, as far as the reduction in nitrogen, you realize that from not introducing waste into wastewater component. 
Holly, do you know of any of these systems in Harwich? We have, uh, I believe we have only one. One. Again, they've not caught on in the mainstream environment. They're <laughs> usually a specialty. Hang on a second. If you, and if you had two or three of these in your house or whatever, toilets like this, you also need some form of septic system um, or some kind of system for all the gray water, you know, yes, stuff. Yes, you do. Yeah. You still have to have a conventional septic system for all of the other uh, uh, flow right. within the house. You're allowed to do a reduction in design, but uh, you still do have to have uh, a system to handle that gray water. Okay, Linda, you had a question? How big a tank would you have to have in the basement doing the composting on your average house with a couple of toilets? And how it's, big is that tank? It's sized according to the number of people in the house, but it is, um, you know, it, it's not a rain barrel. It's, it's larger than that. It's bigger, a few rain barrels. You know, it's several hundred gallons. Like several an oil tank? Gallons. Like an oil tank? Is it like an oil Probably tank? Probably like an I mean. oil tank, yeah. I was just trying to get I've a seen. sizing, so like an oil tank. Yeah, at least okay. in the basement. Septic system maintenance, again, I'm going to refer people, to, if you haven't had the opportunity to go to the um, health department website, we do have some, a lot of information mm -hmm. there on, and links to the DEP. We talked about pumping three to five years. Uh, pumping does not remove nitrates. So you'll hear, well, if, let's put in a mandatory pumping system so that everyone has to pump out their system every two or three years, and that will reduce the nitrogen problem. Pumping prolongs the life of the septic system. Pumping keeps the solids and grease from going over into your leaching facility and gumming that up and shortening the life of your system. It does not improve wastewater quality. Uh, don't use chemical additives. Uh, repair plumbing leaks promptly so that you are not flooding your septic system. And again, uh, I encourage you to visit the Board of Health website. We have a lot of information links to the DEP on septic system maintenance, other specialty areas about selling your property, if you need to have the real estate inspection, application forms, and a whole section on do you need a new septic system, how to get started, lists of engineers, how to. So um, I hope that people will use that website, give us a call, and with any of your questions, and hopefully we can refer you to the proper authorities. Thank you, Paul. And I must say that um, the feedback I've gotten from the folks that are, you know, needing septic systems or had them put in and whatnot is their, their response from your department, whether it's, you know, someone doing a perk test or someone have to inspect the system, you know, before or after it's installed has been excellent. So I think you should be proud of the fact that I mean, you and I go back years enough to know that at one time we had all these backups and things going on. And I don't mean that in the septic systems. I just mean in the getting things done and whatnot and I think your folks are responding very rapidly to um, to people's needs so thank you very thank much you. any questions from the board yes you know um, you spoke about phosphorus um, just briefly can you tell me or all of us a little bit more about phosphorus in our tank in our systems at home and um, for instance if we don't necessarily live near a freshwater pond how it affects our water in our yard you know, in our groundwater, leaching into the groundwater? Uh, the phosphorus is the um, food for algae in a freshwater pond area. If, if you are not, and phosphorus does not tend to travel through the um, soil as readily as nitrates. Okay. Generally, if phosphorus is traveling through uh, a porous soil like ours, it will be uh, it will cling to the soil particles, and, and sightings in the literature say that um, use figures of about 300 feet before all of the all of the phosphorus is absorbed onto the soil particles. Uh, so we've had very successful programs in in uh, the nation and in Massachusetts with removing phosphorus from laundry detergents. And then most recently, <coughs> the phosphorus from dishwashing detergents. So I think we are we are reducing the large a large amount a good proportion of phosphorus that's going into the wastewater. The other thing is, if you are around a pond, is to be careful about 
phosphorus in any of the fertilizers that you that you are using that will run off into the into the freshwater resource. But other than that, phosphorus is not as uh, linked to health problems the way that nitrates are. There are um, uh, not only phosphorus in the ecological, excuse me, nitrogen in the ecological environment, but nitrogen is also a serious um, health, can have serious health effects in babies. It, and that's why there are also the drinking water standards. In some parts of the country where there's a very large amount of naturally occurring nitrogens, you will have a, a disease known as um, blue baby syndrome. And uh, the nitrogen can bind up into the hemoglobin of the body and rob the body of oxygen. So the original standards for nitrogen in drinking water were based upon very serious health effects. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank Hopefully you. everybody found this worthwhile. Very so. It was very good. Okay, moving on on the role of business, uh, selectmen's should say roles and responsibilities, I guess, instead of mm -hmm. roles and responsibilities. Linda, you asked for a continued discussion of this. So I'll oh, uh, yes. Last week we had really focused on the Board of Selectmen not directing individual selectmen not directing the town administrator and I thought I'd just like to comment on the other end of the heap which is as selectmen we have to be careful that we don't allow the employees if they talk to us to then move us in a direction of directing the town administrator that to make sure that if somebody is talking to us to make sure that we direct them to their supervisor or to the town administrator so I just wanted to get both sides sort of talked about mm -hmm. okay anything else thank you and thank you mr. chair for okay. putting that oh, you are. again I just reiterate for the board if there's a topic you want you know you want the chairman to put on the agenda get it to me before like Wednesday Actually, we're going to be doing agendas Wednesday mornings um, starting next week because we have a, a week off. But uh, if you can get them to me before then, and uh, whatever you can provide for uh, backup material, that'd be helpful just so the board can read it and digest it before they come to the meeting. Okay, next, uh, the long awaited uh, selectman's FY16 goals and objectives. Um, we've been collecting those from, from you folks the last couple of weeks, and I hopefully everybody has the consolidated um, FY16 goals and objectives worksheet. Uh, what I did was take the goals and objectives everybody sent me and I put them into a couple of categories just to try and get our thoughts organized. Uh, and I just, for those in the audience, I'll explain. One is information technology, one is the middle school repurpose, uh, one is wastewater, one is the uh, Monomoy Regional School District, uh, one category is town buildings, one is financial, and one is administrative, and another is economic development. Um, what I would like to do this evening, if we could, is walk through these um, sort of briefly and see if there's any way to combine some within a group. Uh, and maybe we'll all take assignments to, uh, to develop in the next week, um, say a consolidated one. For the middle school, for instance, I would like to come up with one, if we can, consolidated uh, goal and objective um, that we can all agree upon you know, going forward. So. Let's first start off by the information technology, and let me just run through some of these. Uh, an IT overview along with providing all town employees and committees, town email addresses, and assistance setting up as needed to enhance communication between town employees and the public. Um, next one, all committees and individual board of selectmen will be provided with town email address. These will be posted on the town website, and all would transition to using these addresses enhanced communications between committees and residents. Uh, request that all permitting departments implement the electronic online permitting in the next three months. Implement and expand online permitting to the public. Those two obviously are together. Request that appropriate town personnel develop the plan to upgrade the system used for remote participation at BOS and other meetings so it's easier to use and keeps both the TV audience and people sitting in the meeting room engaged uh, with remote participation. The goal would be to have the system in place by 2000 or 12 1 On that one, we a couple of years ago adopted um, 
at least to the Board of Selectmen, um, uh, the concept of remote participation. I think it mainly started with me because I was, I remember sitting in Nanjing, China once for a meeting that lasted three hours and um, I was sitting in my jammies because it was 12 hours, I was just waking up. It was uh, seven in the morning or something. You folks were all here and we did that. The problem is you can do that and you can have a screen here, you can have your phone, but nobody out there knows what's going on and it's kind of hard when other members are talking for the person sitting on the phone on the other end to hear you. So I don't know if we can make that better. We ought to figure out how we do. We ought to figure out how other people do it because somebody else might do it, must do it. And the reason we were driving for that was that it's hard enough to get folks to, to volunteer for boards and committees. We do get some folks that, for instance, go to Florida for you know a month or two months or something in the winter or people have to occasionally travel and they would like to stay in communication or be part of their board or committee. Uh, and sometimes there are important votes that need to happen uh, that you obviously need to have a quorum for. Um, so we need to improve upon that. I'm not sure that's, you know, it might just be something we put as a to-do um, rather than a goal and objective, but let's just keep that in mind. The two before that have to do with this wonderful thing called e-permitting, which the county promised us would be available and, you know, would all be living off of by this time, or a long time ago, I guess. And I, I think I would just ask Chris, maybe what we do there is just get someone to give us an update on where we are with e-permitting and maybe someone from the county uh, to tell us what's going on. I think, didn't they use Yarmouth as the test bed, if you will? Yeah, actually, I think it's uh, Yarmouth and Chatham that are both done. Uh, when you look at those two communities, though, they, they kind of accepted a, a little bit of a, a boilerplate, so they didn't do a lot of customization. I, I think here, just for the board's uh, information in, in terms of thinking about things for a timeline, uh, this system went live for the in-house users uh, around town meeting week. I think that just especially kind of getting a better sense for how the workflow happens upstairs, I mean, there's probably going to be six months to a year before we see that being able to be extended out. Uh, and part of the reason for that is that there was so much customization done uh, for us that um, it's, it's somewhat of a, uh, a unique system. So it's not a boilerplate. I would see that the, uh, the staging of it would be to have a, uh, a public terminal so people that are familiar with the process could come in and do some public access to it. And then we would be able to do that as also kind of a test marketing to see what we need to do to, to fix it. Uh, and then send that out to the uh, general public. But that has been, well, that's created a lot of um, anxiety on the second floor. And I think uh, three months is probably just way too short of a, a timeline. But I think that if we had the, the kind of a phased implementation, make sure our users are good first, have a public access for people that fill out several permits during the course of a week, have them kind of test market it for us, then I think we'll be in a better position to roll it out. So I think it is something that's very doable, but I would suggest kind of doing it more in, in that kind of mindset of. Okay, so let me just ask the question because I think I'm hearing amongst your staff, it's one of the goals you have going forward for the coming year, or is it, it us pushing a, you to do it? It was a board goal, uh, whether it was official or unofficial, so I, I have been continuing to push to get that accomplished. Okay, so, so maybe what we do here is we ask you to come back with a, a timetable or a plan, you know, to just, um, that we can say then in September, well, did this get done or that get done or you know, that type of thing. Angela? Uh, I just ask that you uh, gather up a half dozen or a dozen people who would normally use the permitting in their businesses, bring them in, let them see what you have, and get their ideas and how well they can work with it. Uh, I bring that up because when the, in, at the county level, when it was first presented, they had not done it. And, and they thought that what they were giving their customers was terrific. And it turned out a lot of the people who were going to turn in permits couldn't deal with it or didn't like it or had problems. So it might, may shortcut some long-term issues. Yeah, that's the exact idea. Find yeah. five or six users, bring them in, have them go through. They're familiar with them already, so they'll be good. Yeah. Uh, it's, the, it's the resident that wants to do something for the first time that's really going to struggle if we don't do the test marketing first. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on that one? 
the, um, it's it, it keeps being brought up about live broadcasting our meetings rather than tape them. Is that something that uh, would just fall into the IT re overview? I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay. If you just yep. hold that, hold yep. that ammunition for a minute. Okay. Uh, the thing about all town employees and committee town email addresses, I assume that's something that that's easy to do. Isn't yeah, we it? already do that. Uh, the only thing I would think is we just need to make sure we keep up to date, you know, to make sure. But when a new employee comes on, they're issued their their email address. Whether we have it on the website accurately and the ability to interconnect. Maybe yeah, one, one of the problems there. is, for instance, I have most of us, I think we all do now, have a, a, a town email address. Quite frankly, I don't use mine, but that's, that's another topic. Um, whether people use them or not, you know, they have them, but they may not use them. That's all. Linda, should I, I, I think I know one of these is, is my goal, uh, but I'm really talking more towards the committees because I hear time and again, somebody says, I want to get in touch with the XYZ committee, and I don't know what to do, so they call Sandy or Ann and say, can you get a message to whoever is the chair of such and thus committee? So I'm, I'm really driving this more. I know that the Board of Selectmen have them in town employees. I'm looking more for there to be a uh, historic district, historic commission email address so somebody can send them a request. Uh, you know, the Housing Authority, the Housing Committee, uh, you know, the Planning Board. Uh, I think the intent there is to put a little space between, say, a chairman's personal email. Absolutely. And someone from the public just trying to contact them. I think mm -hmm. that's the topic. So if they had a site or an email that they knew they could go to when it's only town business, you know, about their committee, for instance, mm -hmm. I think that I agree with that. That'd be helpful. So I'm really driving more to I mean, that's one of these is Michael's. Michael, I think you're the, you and I are on the same yeah. on this one. But it's the it's really it's the committee impact uh, because they are all using their own personal emails. So it's to achieve that separation. Plus, having a town email means all these things are being saved on the server. I do think that we we do offer. I'm trying to think of a few of the newer committees that we formed that Foster will send out, you know, or try to meet with them. And we do get some resistance. People want to use their own. I mean, two members just said that now. So you know, that's something that we could probably set up a, a process and allow for that to occur. But I think we are going to have a little bit of uh, pushback from. Well, one of the things we can do is, you know, pretty soon. As we get later in the summer, we'll start having boards and committees appear before us to give us their annual report. And one of the questions we should ask them, at least at that point, is, you know, d does your board or committee have an email address? Are you using it? Um, that Why not? You know, that kind of thing. So, And, and even if, uh, you know, as they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, if we don't provide the water in terms of the email addresses, we'll never move forward to the committee's transitioning to use them I mean one way or another you got to pull the trigger <coughs> and start somewhere yeah. yeah and I would I would think that the the entire operation should use Harwich email addresses I mean I, I think I think the Board of Selectmen town administrator support staff uh, departments I mean I think that this is it's town business we should we should be using town email addresses mm -hmm. or work towards using town town email Okay, anything else yeah, in there? Um, I would like to also have information provided to me and maybe to the public as to who's in charge of what when it comes to IT. Um, as far as I, uh, like the website, for instance, um, I would have thought that might have been Foster's, but no, it's Channel 18. So if there could be some sort of, um, I guess, list of, of duties of the different departments. Um, so when people ask me, for instance, in public, well, who do I talk to about that? And I say, oh, well, I, I, we have an IT guy, but I guess that's not the right guy to ask, so call Channel 18 or email them. Maybe we can add that to uh, frequently asked questions, you know, where to, where to get information from so people have that. I think on the new website, which I think we're going to do a presentation on the 29th, 29th the yeah, kind 29th of show, that, yeah. there's a, um, what do we call it, a fast track or something where if you have a, a question you can go to that with the idea of kind of driving it. One of the things in a, in a small organization you do sometimes get these hybrid approaches that occur over time. Uh, so Foster, uh, the IT director, I think did a lot of this. We happen to have some pretty good talent on our Channel 18 so we've now integrated that talent into it. 
So sometimes things evolve over time. But to your point, we can make sure that we put something better on the website so if people have information that they want to get it to us. And we would encourage people to use the, the website as it is oh, now. Sure. Yep. And it's only going to evolve over time. I mean, we had a discussion a couple weeks ago that, you know, it's sort of brand new. And um, I think we've done a good job of getting some initial feedback and, and some things, you know, links and whatnot uh, cleaned up and whatnot. The other topic, which I think, Michael, you're going to start on, was uh, there, there has been some interest lately, I'll just say, on, on uh, what it would take uh, to make this broadcast live, for instance, and maybe, you know, some of the other meetings and whatnot, uh, live broadcasts and whatnot. I think it's a little unfair just to put Channel 18 people on the spot with that, but I would, I'd like to have them at least think about what that means and get back and give us some information on, you know, what, what kind of equipment would be needed, if anything, what kind of people it would take, what kind of training it would take, how you'd roll it out, et cetera. So, and by the way, you know, it costs money at some point in time. Yeah, so. I, I do, uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I guess I have to do a better job of trying to articulate all the different things that we do. But I hope people realize in the last year, we redid the website in total, and we did that in about six months. The fiber, uh, actually the head end for the fiber comes into the community center. Mm -hmm. The town had installed a conduit that first, well, I don't really quite understand why, but they put it through the, the, the high school site, mm -hmm. and during the construction, the conduit got damaged. We approached the board. We, got the, we had a board approval to, to pay funds out of the cable fund to improve that, right, right. so that's been fixed. Now we have to take the next step, which is actually doing a fiber connection. So we are actually looking at doing the fiber connection. At the same time, we're looking at doing the fiber connection, though. We actually, we had our meeting over in Chatham not that long ago, mm -hmm. and we are thinking about the concept of how do we do a setup where we have maybe the small meeting room next to us, have cable set up in there. If you noticed the other day, I think Mike and, and uh, Angelo, Mike, and uh, Peter were at that meeting. One of the town employees went over, hit the button, and he started to, to tape the meeting, yep. just automatic, you know, one person doing it. I think if we can get to that point for some of the rooms, then we'll be able to broadcast more meetings. But a lot of these discussions do occur behind the scenes, but there, there's a lot going on in this organization. So we are kind of continuing to progress, but things evolve sometimes in, in a slower fashion. Part of that I think is good because we don't want to just hurry up and do something quick just to have to redo it later. So we are trying to be a little bit methodical. So, so there has been a lot done. Yeah, so maybe here we look for is I just call it an IT plan for the coming year and beyond. And, you know, part of it is a couple of months ago, I remember we, we basically authorized, was it $100,000 for the? 50000 for the school too. Oh, in Chatham did studio. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Chatham yeah, yeah. And people, I think people look at that and say, well, you've given that money away. How come you're not doing it here? You know what I mean? Uh, as far as upgrading our stuff, there is a cost associated with all this, and we need to understand, you know, what it costs, when it could be done, how we might fund it. You know, maybe it's something that we need to put an article together for next spring or something. And so, you know, we need to do something. But let's find out what it is. And also, let's find out what people really want. Right. I mean, the other thing is we have a, a new a new station director that's been here for a year and a half. So it's a long time. You know, I mean, <laughs> he's laughing out there. It, it's a work in process. I would just kind of caution the board. I mean, I, I realize we're going through this. I mean, the, the work schedule that that would be laid out to try to accomplish, and you have eight areas that you're you're looking at. I would encourage the board that. You know, we have to prioritize if we're ever going to be able to get things done to, to maybe one in each area if that's sure. what the board wants, or yep. I think eight to nine is what we did before. Too much. Uh, so, yeah, because if we try to do too much, I mean, it's just, and then life happens and things happen, we're not going to get a lot done. We understand. Right. Yep. Okay. Lou, did you have a comment? One quick comment, please. Can we have Janelle and Michael first switch their name plates? I hate <laughs> getting them confused <laughs> in front. Is that yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Uh, in Thank terms you. of looking at things like, that's much better. <laughs> well, you and, feel you better now? I I and you were confused. And you were confused. <laughs> yeah. I was oh. confused easily. From now on, please point that out at the beginning of the meeting. I'll uh, try. Yeah. I'll try. Uh, in terms of looking at things, uh, in terms of technology and perhaps uh, having the meetings broadcast live. I'm 100% in for it. I love the idea. And then I thought, why do I love the idea? 
and I couldn't come up with an answer for myself. So perhaps we ought to also look, as we look at different projects, what is going to be the impact? How many more people are going to be watching even the selectmen's meeting, which we think is very important, because it's live versus watching it the next day? And we're going to spend time, energy, and effort. Are we going to get five more people to watch it? Ten? Zero? So we need to also look at that impact beforehand. So if I may, thank you. All right, anything else? Yeah. yeah. Just a comment. I think uh, what Chris said about the, the machine that was in Chatham, mm -hmm. that you, the person just pushed the button and we recorded that session, we should be looking at before we look at the live broadcast. Uh, because there are a lot of committees that I think uh, would benefit by having their meetings broadcast. And if it were as, as simple as pushing a button, uh, I think that would be I terrific. I think we have moved. There have been a lot more committee meetings yeah. in the past year and a half and are being taped and broadcast. Yeah. And I think that's really good. I know, but I think we need to keep going down that path. Jamie. Yes, we started um, filming uh, Conservation Commission uh, planning board sometimes when they request it. And uh, in uh, cemeteries filmed one. We meet a little bit of resistance from boards and committees that get a little nervous when you want to film them and put a microphone in front of their face. But we, we are welcome to the idea of filming more boards and committees. Thank you. Anything else on this? Is that machine you're speaking of portable? It, it looked like it was portable. Mm -hmm. Well, the other, the other advantage they have in that building is that that building was built to serve as a town hall and it was set up appropriately right it's brand new it's brand new mm -hmm. so yeah, just be, on, on the portable concept uh, just thinking about it the the cameras that were up were right. all stationary right. cameras oh, yeah. so it's not one we'd have to set up each room and then have that unit yes. to be able to do it that's the problem so there's a little bit of rooms. yeah i'd yeah. still opt for a live broadcast over that then um because i think that to answer mr urbano's question i think that many more people would watch the meetings um, if they were live because they're at night whereas when they are rebroadcast it's at 10 in the morning the next day and then at dinner time so I do Which think I? that maybe we need to weigh the weigh the two things of either re having the portable device to record or having live options at least for the selectmen's meetings I think they also stream you can just dial up and you on can demand. just uh, you know on demand so you're not just 10 o'clock, you, you don't have your two slots. You can actually just go in and say, gee, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, I'd like to I've never been to able to do that unless it's on YouTube. Maybe, maybe part of your demonstration, when you do the website, we should show people how to do that. that. You add that in there? Thank you. At one time, they were doing, you were doing a 7 o'clock or an evening, for, are you still doing that? Yeah, it airs, it'll air tomorrow at 10 and 7. So it does air at night. And then you can stream yeah. on demand. Okay. Ann. I would just like to make one comment about the um, the live interactive, well, the, the live. This is Ann Stewart, by the way, in case anybody oh, doesn't Ann know. Stewart just Harwich. To me, um, the only, I, I agree with Lou, there's not a whole lot of point in having it live unless there's some way for people out there in Harwich to be able to actually interact. And, and obviously you could, it could, it could turn into a circus if everybody wanted to call in or email or whatever. But maybe there could be just some portion of the meeting for, for kind of critical votes and everything for um, a person to email in and then somebody could be assigned to read those emails. I'm thinking of a lady, I'm thinking also of Dorothy Harder, but I'm thinking of another lady that came in, and I can't remember what she talked about, but whatever it was, it was, it was really passionate. And she said she had never been able to come to a selectman's meeting. She came, I think maybe she had oxygen too, whatever it was, it was very difficult for her to get in. And there are people out there that might really, you know, watch, go, watch these meetings if they were live, if there was some way that they could ma have their comment. Again, it would have to be 
regulated in such a way that it didn't turn into a zoo, you know, like, like WXTK's Free For All Friday. But uh, just a thought. You know, I, I agree with Lou. There's really not much point. I mean, why can't you watch it later on or on demand a few days later? The only point would be if somebody could make a difference and have their thoughts heard. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move on to the next topic. It would be the middle school. And I think here that uh, everybody wants to get a resolution to it somehow, some way. Um, my comment, I guess there's several ways to think about doing it. And uh, I know, Michael, you, you've been an advocate of getting some, I'll just call it outside professional help to do, to do some uh, cost estimates and whatnot. Uh, my question there is, uh, where would those funds come from other than going to, for an article or something at, at town meeting? Because uh, I don't think those funds are slotted at this point in time to do that. So one approach is that we, we, whoever we is works on the three alternates or whatever you want to call it or options put some more meat on the bone as, as best they can, but then we figure out if we needed to, in article time, to, to okay, what would it take to get an outside consulting firm to, to do a specific scope of work and give us a bid, you know, price to do it, I'm making this up. Mm -hmm. If it was $20,000, we'd take it to town meeting and, you know, see if it gets voted, and uh, it's either, you know, gets done as part of the budget at that point or gets part, of, you know, gets done as a, um, uh, capital exclusion or free cash, whatever it is, but then we move to the next step after that. Um, short of that, I think it almost has to be in-house talent for the next year, um, unless somebody's going to volunteer from the outside to help us. So that's my only caveat there. But I, And I think we all agree we need to put more stuff on it, you know, what it looks like, what it smells like, and I don't mean that facetiously. I mean, we just have to know more about it. Uh, uh, Angela? I think we have to use currently available data or any information that somebody would like to provide as a volunteer or part of the team. Um, it, it's kind of like when the, the waterways were looking at Sacquatucket. They had, they had to lay, get it laid out generally, understand sort of what they wanted, and then when they got it to a situation where everybody was kind of in agreement, then they had to come up with $500,000, I believe, maybe a little less than that to do the real design that would go out to bid. So I think we're at the stage where there are three or four directions that are possible. I think we need to uh, pr provide as much information as we can on each of those directions and then uh, provide that information uh, to the public, get their input, and then make a determination of which one of those activities the, the the public wants to go into and i can almost see at some point it sounds a little crazy i don't think we've done this before and almost a ballot question that says pick one <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yeah you know, I, something like that right. you know for for this direction though this this at least in reading all this the direction we seem to be going is um definitely with the ballot question probably peter with the options but for this use for town use the board and, and Chris had alluded to it or said at last meeting when we when the, when Larry Brophy read the report that the board kind of needs needs to take a position and develop um, kind of where they want to go with it. So for this option, do we want to put another committee together? I don't think do we so. want to do we want to use um, Larry Brophy and in-house people, the chairman and in-house people? There's a there's another resident that wrote in. Um, Mar uh, her name is Marna Bate. She was part of, I, I think, um, using the the current community center, putting together some of the information on that. She was interested in, in kind of developing a plan or helping to de develop a plan for use. Um, I think we need to figure out, mm -hmm. it's been mentioned that the building's not ADA compliant. Then it's been mentioned that at least a good portion of it's ADA compliant. Um, so in laying out the building and laying out the uses, we should probably have some people on a committee to kind of determine what spaces are going to be used. I'm kind of, excuse me for a second, I'm kind of looking towards Angelo as the liaison to that committee yep. to sit at least with the current chairman and come back with some suggestion as to how to move forward, whether it's that committee expanded or contracted or reconstituted or not. 
Yep. I know this board has enough to do without getting into, you know, the ceiling's got to be fixed at twenty dollars or something. You know, that somebody out there should be focusing on that. Well, I, I think uh, you need, we need somebody, and he has to have access through Chris to department personnel who can check out the various ADA and other requirements. And we need to have a piece of paper that says, here are the three, three possibilities for whatever it is. Uh, this would provide this to the public, whatever that, that is. Uh, then this will cost in the order of magnitude of this to this, and it will take so much time. And, and then I think the uh, public can make a judgment on what they want because that's really what, what, what we're after. Uh, I think if you, if you don't have a rough idea of the cost, a rough idea of the benefits, you know, you start picking things like, you know, we could do a bowling alley and, and maybe uh, uh, grow lobsters in there or something. I mean, it just starts to get silly. So I think I, you have to narrow, you have to narrow it and Peter? come up with some uses for it, no doubt about it. And I, I do know that in speaking with Larry Brophy, he is going to do a presentation. I thought he had already asked on the 29th on uh, the three or four topics that had been explored and provide a little bit more information. And then that committee dissolves basically uh, two or three days later than that. And then give us a little time. And I'd like to work with Michael, if, if it would be all right with you, sure. to try to put this t together and, and move it along. Can, can, uh, go ahead, Linda. Just a question. Um, I know that uh, you know, we've, we've before periodically talked about a ballot question. And if we could ask Chris to explore with uh, town council and whomever else, how can we phrase a ballot question that says, uh, I would like to build this, that, or the other thing, and be able to check a box off, but have them all in the same ballot question. And I don't know if that gets forced into a non-binding ballot question in order to make it legal or what, because if you look at our ballot questions, they all say, do you want to do this, yes or no? It's not, do you want to do this or that or the other thing, yes or no? It's, it's a very specific up or down. So I don't know how legally that ballot request could be written so that people could make that kind of choice. You know, the, the, the challenge I think is that every year we could take a new thing we want to do with it yeah. to town meeting and get it turned down and turned down and turned down and when do you finally get one that they say yes. If you look at some of the other schools around the state that have been, I'll say abandoned for lack of anything else, some of them end up sitting there for 10 and 12 Decades. years before you know the community finally gets so tired of it they do something, whatever something is. And it's just hard to get um, get consensus. Um, so I think there's got to be a way to say, do you want A, B, or C? And by the way, the details are along the way. It costs this much, and you get this benefit, and this much, and that, and that, and that. So one, one additional thing. I think we do need the carrying costs for that school right now. You, know, you mentioned the, the mm -hmm. septic system and this and whatnot, so, so we know what that is. So, so Angelo, could I just I'm put you on the spot? Can we get you to draft one giant middle school repurpose goal and objective here? Would you be willing to? Well, you can work with Michael, sure. Yeah, we'll you can work with anybody you want, but yeah, will you sure. take that on? Peter, I have one thing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, actually, two things. We know that the middle school repurpose committee from this past year gave three uh, recommendations with uh, weight first, second, and third. Mm -hmm. um, so coming up with something, Angelo and Michael, they're gonna have to take one of those three positions is what I'm hearing you. No. 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 We're gonna take all three I think positions. I those three. Take all three yeah. positions. Okay. Because those three positions have no cost involved, they have no benefits laid out, and you can't say exactly what anybody's doing. I, I do request one thing. I would like to turn in that statement you want after Larry presents well, mm -hmm. fine. okay so it'll be in and then my second thing is um, I want to point out for the public that the middle school is being used by um, the rec department and community center overflow um, and that 
I think it's very important, especially after this summer, when the rec department is going to be utilizing it probably a, almost on a daily basis, if not a, the majority of the week, that we really look at that. Um, their summer camp program has expanded and they are going to be bringing children over there to use the facilities and I think that's wonderful for the town. I think it's great that um, the kids will have a place to go that you know will not be limiting them. Um, so I, I do think it's very important that we as a board not make any kind of major decisions until at least after the summer and we see how we are ut utilizing that space that we're paying for anyway. This is going to take at least till next town meeting to get something yeah. sorted out, trust me. This will. She, Linda. It sounded like maybe he... Barbara Ann, I'm going to get you in a second, don't worry. Linda. Um, it, By the way, we only got 17 more to go. So. I, I understand. <laughs> hey, you're the one who asked for this conversation. I know, I did. Sorry. Uh, could we have, Chris, a an actual report in writing as to who, what, when, where, how often during the week that middle school property is currently being used. I think there's been an awful lot of conversation, oh, we're using it here, we're using it there, they're sorta of gonna do this. They're... I have no clue who is over there, when or where. Sweet. I mean, if somebody is over there, if we're using the middle school means somebody is playing patonk twice a week for an hour, that's not use. You're saying you want the schedule. I want the schedule. I'd like okay. it in black and white. What is the schedule? What are we looking at? So that we can at least have an idea of what we're talking about rather than having it be uh, tossing around anecdotal. Yeah, no, that, that I think that's fair. And, and just administratively, what's been done is Sean Libby is responsible for continuing to maintain it. Mm -hmm. he, he heats it only at 50 degrees to prevent the building from deteriorating. So his primary job is just to kind of prevent the building from getting any worse. Then actually both Carolyn and Eric have been charged that if they do, as described, have overflow projects and they need it, they're not to do anything for any long term. This is just really a, a way to protect the building until the town makes a final decision as to what direction it wants to go in. So I don't know if we, I guess we have them sign up to, to rent the room so we can get the sign ups to give some kind of sense. But you know, I, I think it's probably safe to say, I mean only probably about 10% of the building is being used. I mean the, it, it's not, it's not a you know, heavy use. Well that's what I'm trying to get through because you know, Janelle is making the statement that there's all this use over there and I'm hearing that too, but then I hear a statement like only 10% of the building is getting used on some basis. So I'd like to know the black and white of it and, and not all the fuzzy. You know, if yeah. we can just get the schedule, how has it been used? How is it planning on being used for this summer? Because this is really, it's too nebulous for me. I, I would suggest, and, and I, I kind of made this comment since I, I've been involved in, in trying to do things with town buildings that I really think it's exceptionally important to focus on what is gonna be an acceptable use. Have Larry Brophy come in, look at the, look at the three. I, I did have a lady come into my office, I apologize, I cannot remember her name, that she helped out starting the, the community center. I don't personally think we need to have a community center part two, but she was advocating for having it be like an arts center have artist space for people to rent out classrooms, have performances, call it a performance center. And that's a different, different avenue. Mm -hmm. And I think that having a group look at what are three top viable options, put it onto the ballot. I think if we do non-binding, we probably can figure out how we can get which options people want and you know do something creative to see what the community wants to get behind. But I think you gotta give them you know, a few options that are different, housing, town hall annex, even though that's not my favorite, uh, arts center, you know, and, and to kind of to list things out and, and see. And I think to Angela's point, some kind of write up of, you know, one thing may cost, you know, $3 million, another one may cost a million dollars, one may be $25 million, some sense for what they'd be well, buying. Well, I get to Barbara Ann. Well, I'm just gonna make the comment that, um, that I'm perfectly happy if someone wants to put together a proposal with meat to it to use it for an art center, for use it for a music center, to use it to do pottery. But just, I think, all too much over the past couple of years, it's been 
hey, we could use it as a such and thus. Well, that needs to be developed. What is the cost going to be? How is it going to work? Somebody's got to put together a business plan if they want to actually propose those types of things. Um, if, if they've got an idea, tell them to flush it out. I think we'll listen to anything at this point. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get to Barbara Ann because she's been very patient out there. <laughs> And don't trip, please. Just um, two suggestions. When you're talking about the ADA cost and the potential mold mitigation or any building cost, we have free resources. One of them with ADA is the Office of Mobility. I was this town's ADA chair, compliance officer for four and a half years. They come down, they do our community center, they do a whole um, review of the building for free. Why are we going to pay someone to go do that? call them to come down, it's free. The other uh, mold mitigation, we've got a county person. They do that all the time. It's free. So I think whoever you're gonna look at to be on this committee needs to know some of those resources because we keep hearing what's it gonna cost us to do those top three choices and it's gonna cost us money. Everyone keeps telling poor Michael it's gonna cost money for a consultant, we don't have any money. Well, these are two things you talked about that don't cost any money. So there may be other options out there. I mentioned SCORE before and got shot down, but I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing things out that you're trying to move forward and we keep getting the stumble block of we need a consultant. I'm not suggesting that you don't need a consultant, but I think you can chop off some of the pieces with no cost attached to them. And I think you need to look at that. Okay. Thank you. Who else said that? We so lastly, I, I will work with Angelo to to bring something back. The person that Chris spoke of was the same lady that contacted me, Marna Bate, um, and she is very interested. I, I did speak briefly with Angelo about that. But, uh. but the one thing I, I just, you know, I, I've been in government for a long time, and, and the one thing I just, I think it's a key to find out what is politically acceptable to the community first before we commit to, to significant dollars or concepts. What do people want in the community? And until you start to get some sense for what that grassroots element is, you know, I think we should minimize the cost, get the concept down, and then move at least with a purpose that we think people will fall behind. But as we go further into this deck of goals, one of the things I suggested is that we continue what you started this year, Chris, with giving each of the departments or some of the departments that have fee structures mm -hmm. that they're their their total costs so that they know what they're charging and what they're getting back uh, because it it's fun to be able to use a whole new building but i i know and everybody in the, this committee knows the indirect negative cost the rec department has already now you add another building into that and it goes over a million dollars that's fine if people want to pay the million dollars if they if they if they say yeah I think that's terrific. Let's, let's tax us another million dollars. That's fine. But we can't do it without them understanding what the numbers are. So otherwise, you, you get surprised. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fine. I mean, I think with any of these options, <clears throat> the ideal thing would say, okay, it's, it's this much rehab cost, if you will. It's this much operating, operating. operating cost. And then what do you want to do? And understand they're, they're going to be a range. So and they're gonna yeah, be, yeah. Right. That's okay. All right. Let's move on to wastewater. This is a topic uh, near and dear to all of us, and um, as we saw tonight, we're going to spend more and more time on it, which is appropriate. Um, but let me just run through these. Develop a uh, water wastewater organizational structure, such as water wastewater department head reporting to the TA. Uh, Michael, you had now the liaison to the wa uh, wastewater implementation committee and the water commissioners. Uh, if you haven't already, you need to review where all those discussions got to as far as how do we organize this thing going forward. Um, and see if we can figure that out, which, what makes the most sense. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, you should also look at the, was it March? Sometime in March, the board voted a, a list of um, things they wanted to get done in wastewater um, going forward. Remember that mm -hmm. list we had? Mm -hmm. yep. had that list. And yep. Yeah, you ought to look at that because there was something in there about the, uh, the structure, mm -hmm. if I remember it, correctly. It, it's, I think it was the structure, the enterprise fund, well, there's a lot of things in there, yeah, but I mean, it's three or four things. It's all the stuff. You know, it was all the whole uh, thing about using Title V for build out numbers. I mean, it's yep, just, sir. you know, those kind of, you got to look at that, okay? Uh, we've already, I'll say, entered into negotiations with Chatham uh, regarding potentially using um, 
Uh, there's, you know, there's sewage treatment plant for East Harwich. Um, I will bring back to the board, I'm not going to do it tonight, but I would like to change the, um, to have Angelo and Michael be the reps doing that going forward just because Michael's into it now, so I think we should do that, but we'll do that at our next meeting. Um, complete negotiation with Chatham, okay. But I think, you know, the, the thing with Chatham is it's going to come at a cost, and it could be a cost that's just too prohibitive for all of us, you know, so. But at the same time, if we knew we had the ability to get our septic uh, treated, our sewage treated there, it says, okay, we don't have to necessarily worry about a treatment plant, you know, mm -hmm. close by. Uh, develop a plan for increased public education involvement. I think we all know that. We're starting with this uh, wastewater uh, educational moment. Uh, we're having a session on Wednesday. I'll just point out to everybody the 17th at 6 o'clock at the community center. Um, that is part of that meeting is a public hearing for us to address the, um, um, the mechanisms by which we would recover the costs going forward on wastewater, but we're going to take the front end of the meeting uh, with the um, um, the wastewater implementation committee uh, doing a uh, presentation just to get people up to speed on uh, what's been going on with wastewater, if you will. Um, RFP for me remediation of Hinkley's Pond. I think this is a very important one. I think it has to follow on what we're going to be doing at the golf course. We'll be evaluating for that irrigation pond at the golf course some technology. Uh, we have to keep track of the timing of that and what they're going to use and when they see results. But uh, I think, in my opinion, uh, looking at Hinkley's Pond, and Ann, I'm glad you're here because part of that is not only what you do in the pond, like I'm being facetious, but float a whole bunch of plants and, you know, stuff in there to, to clean it up, but also we know we have to do something with storm water that comes down there without changing the road structure, but just the, you know, layout, just, you know, we know those storm drains need some, that whole system needs some work, and there's also a cranberry grower, you know, there that we need to have some um, discussions with, so we need to look at a kind of complete solution there. And hopefully we get to that point, at least to start to figure all that out in the coming year. At least that's what I'd like to do because most of the wastewater stuff at the moment is, is focused on, you know, how do you treat uh, septic? And, you know, we haven't spent too much time on our freshwater ponds, so we got to start working on that. So very interested in that one. Um, and then look at the uh, water wastewater enterprise fund. So all those things. So. Uh, maybe Michael, maybe you take this one and try and try and put this together. There's probably more than one objective in here, a goal and objective, but mm -hmm. why don't you take the lead if you don't mind on this one and try and put something together. Maybe you break it down the Chatham stuff. You keep the pond separate, I think. Mm -hmm. So Okay, anything else on wastewater? Okay, Monomar Regional School District. Um, I think everybody is aware of the challenges we fa faced last year just in um, the dialogue of working back and forth and, and sharing information with the school and trying to figure out you know how it all fit with the town side of, of, of uh, budgeting and whatnot and I do know obviously that the, um, the school district put out their five-year plan um, we've had some discussions before about trying to come up with a formula a funding formula for the next five years we can all live with and I just threw one out here um, but I think that's something that uh, we should commit to trying to come up with something that says, okay, we get it, they get it, this is what we're going to try and live with uh, certainly going forward for the next five years so we get a little bit more certainty in, in what's going to happen. So. Just uh, not necessarily a kind of a build-up. I, I think that uh, Angelo had started it uh, when I first started that we would have these meetings in which the chairman of the board would go meet with the chairman of the school committee and then Scott Carpenter and myself. I thought that was good to at least establish a level of communication. So if, if you're interested in that, Mr. Sure. Chairman, uh, I'll try to work with, I have a meeting with Scott. We kind of meet off and on just to kind of, and I'll, I'll broach that subject with him about sure. trying to re regroup that. Yep, and if he needs to bring, you know, Terry along. Yeah, that's what the idea yeah. would be. So that, that's fine, that's fine. It, it was, uh, I thought they were good sessions, I thought. Helpful. Good. Unfortunately, by the time we probably come up with the formula, it's probably after the budget season. I don't know. We'll, We'll see what we can do. Uh, we'll but get it be, done be nice to get it done. And the kicker there is, you know, the formula I laid out here was the two and a half plus forty percent of the growth number, which is their budget's about forty percent of what the whole budget is for the town, if you will. And plus or minus their E and D account, which we all know goes up and down. That's that's their reserve fund, if you will. So uh, maybe there's some other kickers to throw in there. Okay, town buildings. Um, I think 
I, I sense some frustration in the last couple of months about where we are with um, assessment on town buildings and whatnot. And I guess my suggestion there is, uh, Chris, uh, we probably get Sean and Lincoln here at some point just to talk about buildings and what needs to be done and what their plans are. And we probably don't hear enough from them. Um, you know, that type of thing. That's something that's doable. Yeah, I, I think uh, when this was made a uh, priority for this past year, you know, I had asked to, to try to focus on certain ones. So I think I would ask the same thing, that to do a broad scale of all town inventory is probably beyond our means. Uh, but if we could focus on a couple to, to try to knock off, um, I think that may be a, uh, a good approach. I mean, I would even put uh, the West Harwich School, uh, since we have a, an interest group that's interested in that, maybe put that on the list. Uh, hopefully, Albra House can kind of be a lot of progress, I thought, have been made on that. And then uh, maybe the Bank Street property as, you know, redevelopment possibilities. But to try to focus on a, a couple so we can do that, I, I think a total town-wide inventory and all the needs. Um, you know, we get a guy that doesn't have any clerical support at all and I just think that's a, a humongous task to give somebody without the really the tools to be successful at it. Link's going to give us the answer. How are you sir? Thank you Mr. Chair. You say sir I look behind me for my father. Um, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Sean Libby's done a wonderful job. Um, he has. We never see him. Well, uh, he's out working too much. I know. We want to see him once in a while. Um, I want to point out that he was the first step in this process. Okay? There's another step that we were close to making, consolidating some budget money that's laying around. But more importantly, we need some predictable cash flows. We, we, I envision coming back and suggesting an article that puts something like maybe not in the scope that Brewster did, but a million $2 million something out for some cash flows to then to be able to prioritize the maintenance and actually follow through with those maintenance. When he first came on board, he put, a, he put a, uh, quite a list together, and I don't recall what the numbers were, but that was floated am amongst everyone. But Sean was the first step. It was a great step. I understand. We need some cash flows, and you still need some people. Yep. Now he's had, he's been here how long now? Um, started with the administrator, I believe, year and a half. Yeah, okay, so. Like a month before me. <laughs> so maybe in the next couple of months, you know, you two can come in and talk to us. He's been here long enough. I'm sure he knows every building inside and out. And, you know, if we had a discussion even about Albert House, he can say, oh, yeah, I know you need to do this, you got to do that, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, it, 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 to me, it's basic stuff like, you know, we finished painting the outside of this thing, hopefully this summer. You know, I'm starting to ask questions. Well, do we need this garage thing here? It's not exactly an antique. Um, not when it's got T111 siding on the back side of it, you know, but I mean, does anybody, is anybody really going to use it or not? Would it be better off as a parking space? I have no idea. Nor do I, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we can give you some direction on that. Linda. And I also think that, if I remember correctly, part of having, uh, hiring Mr. Libby as this uh, maintenance project supervisor was that we were going to get that kind of assessment on buildings. So is there, while I understand that it's, it's hard without the clerical support to get it to the Nats eyelash, but has there been, is there anything that can be given to us that says um, town hall, age of roof, age of furnace, age of this, and just start, is there, has any of that information started being collected in a packet that would at least start those plans because I mean, I know that I had a whole ton of questions on the Alboro House, which were structural and, and a whole bunch of questions. And uh, I think that there's, there's accumulation of work, of, of information that has to happen before we start talking about, well, let's put a million dollars, you know, have a, you know, a, a capital exclusion for a million dollars to put it into a maintenance fund. I think we have to have some information and details behind that. I, I know, Peter, you and I have talked about that. What is that plan? What is the assessment of the buildings? We have. Mr. Chair? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
that was done. Sean put those numbers together. A decision was made to disseminate those uh, numbers to the various departments with jurisdictions over those buildings, since this truly is not a centralized function as of yet. Okay, I so guess, will I guess that get you the, the I guess work what we're asking is done. maybe there's an update to that. You got it. Yeah, I, and comes to us. Yeah, actually, the, the board did receive some of this in terms of uh, when we went through the capital outlay uh, process, they had asked for the same thing, and Sean went, and I was surprised that he, on his own, went and talked to a lot of departments, and they did a priority list that the fire needed to have the roof done earlier than something else. So when the budget plan was adopted, uh, I think we get seven out of ten of the top things that he said he needed were, on the, were in the capital plan to be funded. So that wasn't done really by myself or, or Link. That was done by Sean's input, working with department heads to establish a priority list. But we can we can get that. He had that list that he had distributed. Uh, I don't you know I don't know how yeah, super yeah. formal I, it is. I but think it's, uh, it's, what it's, I'm what I'm asking for is I think it's great that all this work is going on and and working together and getting stuff on the capital plan and getting seven out of ten of the top priorities. But I think that you're not doing yourself a very good service by not having it come forward to the rest of the town and giving us a report. I think that, you know, that kind of information coming to us. My, my suggestion, like my suggestion is update, update the information and let's pick a time, we'll put Sean early on the agenda, have him come in for half an hour or whatever and just go through it with, you two go through it and so we can ask you and Sean directly any questions we might have and then we'll make the report better. I have okay, question. Janelle. Yeah. Um, there's what about forming a committee that would uh you know obviously be volunteers of um a maintenance committee of town buildings um i had a very good meeting my first liaison meeting with the community center uh, facilities committee the other day and it was they know everything that, that needs to be done down to dust bunnies i think that's great not that we need that for every single building but maybe we could have a committee for the the the, the buildings you're laughing there's no dust she said there are no dust buttons. you're right do you need some do you need some no, we'll have them shift over because it sounds like um they don't link and sean don't have enough personnel to really do all of that and um i know we're segueing into an agenda item later in the meeting about committees but um there are committees on the website that are defunct and um i think maybe we could suggest that we form a new committee of maintenance and and also uh, there seems to be some general um, public uh, contention that we we as a town have not kept up with maintenance over the decades so that could be a great way to involve some of the people who are disgruntled about that Lincoln what do you think about all that I think we'll get Sean's work product that was distributed to Capital Outlay, who then instructed us to disseminate to the department heads to uh, Mr. Clark this week. Okay, and so let's, you know, in the next few, several weeks, we'll get you and Sean in sometime this summer. Let's hold off on thinking about, we can still think about a committee, but let's, let's hold off on that until we hear from you and what the plans are. And then, and because I, th I think that people will be surprised how you and Sean work with the different buildings and whatnot, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, because I'm pretty positive I understand how that all works. So, I just, want to, I just want to say when I was liaison to the uh, rec department, Sean was there almost every meeting mm -hmm. working with them because they understood what they needed mm -hmm. and he understood the recreation part, so uh, the building part rather, the maintenance part. And I thought that worked very well. And I think we have virtually a committee for every building except this building. <laughs> but. Uh, but there are people who are uh, very knowledgeable about their building and, and Sean provides a, another another step. So indeed we have committees, I think, that cover not the whole town, but individual be individual buildings or the, or the parks or the, the waterways or the whatever. Okay. I'm not sure we have building committees for no. every building. There's the community no, center. No, I didn't, you, uh, you, you didn't hear me. I said if you take the committees that run each oh, of the, those committees. Each of the operations, and you add Sean to it, uh, and he provides the knowledge base about what needs to be done. They can work through and see what are the most important factors mm. for them, and it becomes a very useful committee. All right, who wants to take town buildings and try and consolidate this into something cohesive as far as uh, what an object, goal and objective would be? I will. 
You gonna do that? Okay. All right, let's move on to financial. Is that okay? We only have financial, administrative, and then economic development, so we're getting here. All right, financial. Um, okay, a couple of things. Um, Staying within the limits of Prop 2.5 and, and minimize the use of capital exclusions to balance the budget. Um, hopefully, as we develop budget message, that ends up being the theme going forward, I would hope. Um, Chris, uh, I know your team's working on a debt schedule, this mm -hmm. topic about looking out seven years, which would match the capital plan, uh, which would just, this would be graphically. I don't want to, you know, we had these, these debt schedules of every individual thing we ever borrowed. I'm really interested in seeing graphically where's our current debt, how it's being paid off, what new debt we're adding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as of the last, you know, couple of years and whatnot, and then where are we going if we overlay the capital plan on that to take a look out for mm -hmm. seven years like the capital plan does. So it really is that straightforward and simple. So I think that's, that may just be something to do, mm -hmm. you know, and it may be something you hopefully you get done before we get to the, you know, even thinking about budgeting in the fall. I don't know. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Stay within proposition two and a half. Oh, the visual software. I think that Andy was going to look at that. Yeah, we provided that information to Andy. Uh, so I don't know if he's reached out to the vendor yet to find out, get some more details on how we would implement that. But okay, he, so has, he has the materials. Okay, so what we're talking about here, Michael and, and Janelle, is um, at the MMA conference. There's a company that, that makes a software package. They work with Arlington, I think was their test case. Oh, right. And it's a, it's a uh, uh, inter interactive graphic, basically, that builds a budget in a box, not circles, not rect rectangles, it's a square. And so much of the square is police, so much is fire, so much is highway, you know, so much is schools, blah, blah, blah. It allows the consumer, the taxpayer, to go online and drill down in any budget. So you can go and pick on the schools. Then a school jumps up with another box that says, okay, here's how much goes to instruction, here's how much goes to building maintenance, whatever. And then maybe you can get on another layer, but it's a, it's a way to keep the public informed very easily if they want to do it and take advantage of it. And as I understand, it works with the um, it works with a, Munis with, our, system. with Munis system, which is a, the municipal software system we all use. So it should really be plug and play to make it happen. And I think it was all two thousand dollars or something like that. So um, I would I would uh, encourage you, Chris, to nudge Andy a little bit more and just get the darn thing. Um, Question, Peter. Yep. Uh, with Monomoy Regional School District being a school district as opposed to a town, we would probably have to. Uh, do they use Munis? I don't recall as to what accounting yeah, package they got. Either. So how do we get how do we get their information in? Should be part of that discussion because they are forty percent of our budget. Yeah, although the, the same as uh, Cape Tech. Yeah, I know in Arlington they, they dealt with obviously the school and whatnot and we're on Munis. So, but our but. But they're it's not, not regional, but it's the, it's the district issue. Yeah, no, so I understand. just don't re recall what they use. I understand. Complication. Um, also, you know, I think that uh, it would be behoove us to somehow on the tax bill show the municipal side, the water side, the school, the regional school district, at Cape Tech, and maybe debt service, and that can either be an insert or it can actually, you know, I get tax bills from down in South Carolina to break it down by here's how much I'm paying for the school, here's how much I'm paying for the water district. I mean, they those are different taxing districts, so that's yeah, I know. you'd have to do it as like an insert. I, think. Oh, I understand. I, I don't think we could add Whatever. That. I think either graphically, I mean, I think, you know, graphically it's okay, or just printed word. Mm -hmm. Let people know. And I, quite frankly, I got a little bit worried when we went to the um, selectmen's meeting or elected officials meeting in Sandwich the other day. The Sandwich um, town administrator, boy, he was gloom and doom because yeah. – <laughs> His school district now eats up something like two thirds of the the total budget, 70%. and he's he's only managing this little piece of it, you know. And um, he was he had some horror stories about he hadn't done a a, um, a debt exclusion for anything but the schools in 20 years, you know. So I asked him to email me that presentation that he did so that we could share it. No, I mean it's you know, and, and the thing they don't have going for them, if you want to call it going for them down there, they have very few. Um, um, second homeowners if you will it's more year-round people year and so you know unlike us that we have a lot of second homeowners that don't have kids in the schools et cetera, et cetera, 
Um, they have a high percentage of the people that you know have kids in the school and, and that kind of thing. So it, it's a challenge for them. And, and you could clearly hear him say it and see it on his face when he was talking about it. So question. Yeah. I mean, one as you look at this breakdown of the tax bills, maybe we should look at how we can put it on the tax bill, because. Uh, for example, people get their bills online. They don't get inserts. Uh, how do we get it to the taxpayer when the bills go directly to a bank? Mm. So there's iterations here, because I, I came up with that, uh, against that, when the um, Wastewater Implementation Committee did their, their one page yeah. uh, addition, it was an insert to the water bills, <coughs> and several people didn't get it because they get their bills online. Well, maybe the visual software package has it. Maybe we can do something in there or, or, or put it, maybe we put it on our website. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, this is this an Amy topic, Treasurer's Office? It's an Amy topic. Yeah, okay. One thing, too, is, you know, there's plenty of work just during the course of a regular, oh, you know, season. So, again, I just ask prioritization of which ones you want to have focused on. Okay, and the last one, um, Angela, I think this is yours, maybe arrange to provide all, to all departments the cost basis for any activities for which a fee is set. This is yours, Jim. Uh, this is not a requirement that fees must match costs, but rather that there must be an understanding of the total cost before any fee can be set. This should include <coughs> the community center and the building operating costs for use in setting the rent. So. Well, uh, many of our departments set fees and many of our departments are not told what costs they have to cover. Not that they have to cover the cost, but they have no idea what the costs are because we don't provide it to them. Uh, we did uh, do for four departments, I and think. We did four because they were basically enterprise or enterprise yeah, type yeah. operations. Yeah, and, and the numbers range from, uh, I don't know, $200,000 uh, to uh, just those indirect costs to almost $800,000. So if you're setting uh, your, I'll pick on the rec department for a moment, your basketball costs at $10 and, and you have 10 people, that's $100, but it's costing you $600. That's not the case, obviously. Uh, you have to know that and either say, yeah, but we have to do that because we want those children to play or no, we shouldn't be doing that. We should either raise the cost or get rid of the program. But I think people, it's time to people to review their programs and their fees. Because, you know, we're talking about wanting a million dollars for maintenance, which I think is a wonderful thing, because we don't spend money on maintenance for years. Uh, we need money to do something with the middle school. No matter what we do with the middle school, we'll need some kind of money. I can bet you right now, without looking at the, at the, the budgets for next year, that we're going to have, be hard put to do anything that we haven't done this year because inflation will go up, we'll get 2.5%, and we've already given 2% to, uh, you know, to the personnel. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it's a problem. Right. So, so I think we need to do that. Linda, if, would, would you? If I could, I, I'd like to at least suggest on that that uh, we had talked about doing more of a general fee study sure. across the board. Uh, you know, in my past experience, some places I've been, when you do fee studies, that has positive revenue ramifications for you if fees are too low in certain areas. So I would rather kind of tie it to something like that as an initial step. That doesn't mean that the, the four departments that we studied, um, you know, we're going to continue on those. Three out of the four are basically self-sustaining or, or virtually self-sustaining. And the one that wasn't was recreation. Uh, but recreation does offset its direct costs or close, close. to, we anticipate that they'll, they'll in, match their direct costs, the indirect costs, I and mean, we'd have to really significantly increase the fees to, to accomplish yeah. that. But, um, you know, I, I would like to do a, more of a general fee study if we were going to do that, because I think that will yield positive benefits from a financial perspective. That's good. I like That's that. Fine. All right, Linda, would you take yes. the financial section? No problem. It might be a couple different, and some might just be to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, administrative, uh, I'll just run through these. Establish procuring and purchasing under an existing staff person, suggest town engineer. Uh, establish personnel function both for administration and for management resources may be done by two different staff members. Encourage town administrator to review all town positions to determine if any activity should be outsourced, consolidated with another position or requires additional personnel. Develop, execute pre-town meeting to enhance voter and 
information to voters, uh, define a clear set of goals and objectives with for the town administrator. And by the way, we'll be doing that once we get our goals and objectives squared away. Agree upon uh, town administrator performance evaluation method and tools. Um, what I suggest we do there is clean up uh, the form method we used in May 2015 for this purpose. Um, Chris, maybe you could just mm -hmm. get that to, mm -hmm. to We get the form and talk about that, yep. And I think we ought to clean up the, the back end, the tail end of it with the, I forget, the days of something. Oh, days you were, yeah, sick days. You got workers comp many something. points yeah, for. It's just like, uh, well, let's clean up the back end of those, it. Those you are and silly. I can sit and figure that out, if you will. But, uh, but on that one, I'd just like to get that done early um, in the fiscal year because then we'll all know what we're going to judge the town administrator by going forward. We'll have goals and objectives. He'll have goals and objectives. We'll have the form or the, the method uh, mm -hmm. set out mm -hmm. as how we're going to do that. There'll be no ambiguity. Okay. Uh, we do time, review town administrative performance on goals and objectives quarterly and adjust as necessary. So, um, anything else there? I think everything except, well, I guess one of the questions is, and, and I, hopefully this will come up at our next meeting on the 29th, the assistant town administrator position. I know yeah, you guys. I get the, I get the comments, I think, last Thursday, so I didn't get a chance uh, to yeah, yeah, and I think, that. Yeah, so Michael and I went through suggestions, and we didn't send it out till Thursday or Friday when we finally got it, so yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so we'll, I'll have My a chance expectation to digest that. The 29th, we'll, we'll have get it. that in. The 29th should be reasonable. Yeah, okay, and then we, if we can all solidify, you know, we agree there, then some of that plays into this, yeah, I yeah. think, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Angela, did you? Yeah, the, the line in here about encouraging the town administrator to review all the town positions, I think it's time uh, to t take a look. Do we, do we have some departments to which we need to add people? Do we have some departments that should, I doubt, that may, maybe if some of their functions should be outsourced? Because things are getting tighter. I think, you know, what we heard in, in Sandwich is going to be our issue, too, in terms of where do we get the money. So it's probably time to take take a look, and we may just jiggle things around or not. But um, it's time. All right. Okay. Last one is economic development: um, expand economic growth, redevelopment, and new development to increase year-round employment and tourism. I just put how in there, and then continue efforts to support affordable housing. I guess the question is in those: what are we really trying to do? I guess is the and what does it mean? So, Michael, I think you... Yeah, I was going to say, I'll take a stab at a, at okay. a more a defined role than that. I can, well, it's I can working with the chamber or... Yeah, doing, you know, which is exactly like. one thought, and then um, to kind of review our policies on encouraging small business. Okay, so, so why don't you take, take that on? That. Yeah. Uh, it would, you know, I'd like Janelle to help me with that. If, if, uh, sure. She's you okay can team up, yep. Again, I'm looking to get these done, you know, like in the next week or so if mm -hmm. we can I know, Angela, I think you're as young. I'm going to wait. Till Mr. Brophy, you can wait till yeah. afterwards. But if we keep going, 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 we'll going it'll be next year at this time. We get our goals for this year done. So, If you want, I'll take a crack at the information technology. Okay, great. So let's just review the assignments since I didn't take any, which is great. So, <laughs> Linda, you have information technology. This is good, huh? This is I how it works. Them, I have them listed. I mean, if you want to get on information technology, Linda, Angelo, and Michael for middle school repurpose, wastewater, Michael. Monomoy, I don't think you assigned somebody, but maybe that. I guess you and I had that one yeah, or something. Yeah, you and I yeah, would okay. do that. Yeah. Uh, so town building, so Janelle. Get I got half of one. I'm going to grab you for wastewater, too. Yeah, okay. Thoughts and ideas. Town building, what? Who has that? Janelle. Town building, okay, Janelle. Janelle. Okay, good. Financial, Financial, Linda. I don't know if did you assign somebody Linda. in that? Yeah. Yeah, Linda. Yeah, Linda. Yeah. How about I'm ad administrative? And then administrative. Well, we, what we said there was, number one, we're going to clean up the form for evaluation, right? You and I will sit and do that, Chris, yeah. to one of our... Maybe that can, you and I will do that, Peter. I'll work with you yeah, yeah, to okay. narrow that we'll, down. We'll, do well that. actually, I mean, because the last three under there are really to-dos. I know. Exactly. Yeah, some of those aren't... And the pre-town meeting thing goals. is, that's six months from now, even think about it, so... Yeah, well, I'll, yeah. I'll take a, you want me to take a crack at admin? Okay. And economic, to -dos. economic development, Michael takes so good. Imagine. All right, I minimize my homework. And obviously, if you know board members want to sit down to you know get some history from my perspective, I'm more than happy to do that. To yep. Yep. Good. Okay, moving on. Now we kept you all waiting out there. 
Uh, new business, consideration of disposal fee reduction costs for the at our gate program sponsored by the Council on Aging discussion and possible vote. Lincoln. Maybe Barbara Ann has some input to this too, I think. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, some of you may notice this, this um, memo of mine does not represent my normal MO in that I usually come out with a strong recommendation. In this case, I have very mixed feelings. Reverend Healy um, has asked uh, that we consider waiving the disposal area fees for the at our gate program um, that is run by the Knights of Columbus. They have come in several times and I have summarily denied their request for this, uh, feeling that it did not meet the town's fee waiving policy that was adopted in 2010. The two main points are that they need to be a nonprofit and provide a tax, I, a tax exempt ID number and that it is in the best interest of the town, quote unquote. Reverend Healy committed his request to writing, which I believe you have in front of you. Um, and I gave not a recommendation, I just simply laid out the facts of this. Um, Bob Rand Foley's familiar with the program. She was my first call um, once I received the request in writing and she's a graciously agreed to vet each request. The program consists of the Knights of Columbus um, receiving a request for helping typically elderly people that either financially or physically are unable to care for their property or do normal chores that we all do. And some of those chores involve doing dump runs. I think the program ha has merit and therefore I, I committed it to writing um, for your consideration. However, the business student in me is extremely reluctant um, to make an exception or to waive or reduce the fees, as I've written here as a possible compromise, in fear of setting a precedent. The disposal area runs at a break-even analysis that I provide you each spring, and although this particular request in dollars and cents doesn't amount to much when compared to a $2 million budget, budgets are tight. And I think a better approach might be to recommend that when they have these situations to tap some other form of charity or like the Caleb Chase Fund or something like that and not make exceptions or uh, reduce fees at the disposal area. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Well, first I want to hear from Barbara Ann. Maybe she's going to convince us here. So. She usually does. So the program um, came to us a while ago. Um, Mark Denon brought it to us. And where we got involved, um, I know Chris is probably the only one privy. Uh, a couple of you have been on the board long enough that we've had a number of our quote unquote hoarding cases that have taken three to five years to resolve. And some of them have been demolishing homes, some of them have been clear outs, et cetera. And so uh, Mark came to us because he had two people, that's how we got started with him, that had a uh, number of maybe 15 bags of stuff, papers, garbage, you name it, and they are not people that drive, they are not people that could get their stuff to the dump. So what happened, and my concern was with a, my, my health hazard hat on, um, they've got you know rotting garbage in this house that's building up and building up and building up because they don't have any way to get a hold of know somebody who can take it away so the Knights of Columbus um, at no charge to the consumer um, unless they're painting a fence they'll buy paint or something like that but if they're doing taking something to the dump they've been doing this um, for free it's a service that they provide um, people said to me well what do they get out of it and they might get a new member to their Knights or basically it's a, a feel-good project for them and it keeps their um, wonderful nights involved. So we continued on our way and they were having more, you know, one good deed doesn't um, go unpunished sometimes. They would tell their friends and then somebody else would come and say, you know, can they come to my house and take my air conditioner out or can they um, move a piece of furniture? Typically, um, most of the things that they do are not necessarily dump runs. Most of the things they do are things that if you had grandchildren or a child nearby, you might ask them to do. But they're, in our case, they're seniors that don't have those people nearby. 
and I don't have staff and volunteers that I can dedicate to go to somebody's house and put in or take out an air conditioner. So that's what we've primarily used them, utilized them for, or the programs we've done with them. Where Lynx Department came in, they asked us if we had um, money that we could, or did I have the authority to reduce this or um, at no fee, let them allow these bags of garbage to go to the dump. And I said, absolutely not. I don't have any authority. You have to talk to Link. So that's how the referral got to him. Um, if you wanted to go down the Caleb Chase Road, um, instead of doing something like this, the Caleb Chase Road, um, the only difficulty is it's a one-time hand up in your life of a maximum of $700. So we would have to change, potentially change that policy because if they did two runs, um, the, after the one run, they wouldn't be able to use it again with the way the policy currently stands. So I, I, I understand Link's position. Um, I don't think it's going to ever be abused. I wouldn't be worried about it being abused. I understand the precedent setting. I can't, I can't um, weigh in on that. I know what the consumer end is like and it's very difficult. Um, I do think uh, Caleb Chase might be an outlet. There is money there. We would need to change the policy, and I'm happy to work with anybody to do that if that's a road you want to go. Um, but to do nothing and say, oh, well, too bad, so sad, I don't think is an option. This problem, and I'm not just specifically talking about hoarding, is not going to go away. There are a number of folks who, for however they got here, are here. They have no support systems. Um, they are using our services from the van coming to and from family pantry and programs to our lunch program to you name it. So this is kind of just one more thing that's coming down the pike, and I'm not sure how this board wants to handle that. Well, just give, me, give me a second here. So in total, if you took all the requests you've had in the last year to take things to the transfer station, basically, or whatever, how much do we think that might amount to? Probably 14 customers. <coughs> 14 customers? One dump run a piece? Is that what you're? Well, if they have like the truck, if it's the, if it's the Knights of Columbus doing it versus you know, their neighbor or some friend, if they're able to find somebody, um, probably one truck. So one run. One truck per? Could be a couple of runs if it was a friend putting it in their back seat or something. So one truck load, if you want to call it that, and, per and if, house. And if, and if the Knights of Columbus, Say I had five nights sitting here. Well, gee, I do. And, and, <laughs> and they each had a they each had a dump sticker. And and they went to the house and they each put it in their individual car, truck, whatever, and went to the dump. Link wouldn't know the difference, would he? Would you? Huh? You wouldn't. Except for I know you always know. Thanks for that suggestion, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> The issue is not necessarily household trash. The issue came <coughs> up with c and I'm not sure the specifics, but they had a couple of trucks of shingles. They were. OK, so let, that's why I'm asking and, this kind and of that question. Ran, and, and what the gentleman told me is, geez, we just spent three or $400 out of our pocket. Can't you help yeah, us out? Yeah, I understand. So, so one of the questions is, do we make this so that if it is household in bags, right? I mean, if it was something in bags, like, and if I had vetted that program, there, there wouldn't be any shingles. It would be that that's the whole issue. So, so if you're that's trying to sort, if you're trying to sort, reduce the cost of things that come in bags versus a truckload of shingles or 28 concrete blocks or whatever that, you know, you obviously got to pay to do something with, right? Um, is that where we're headed here? Uh, my concern uh, is primarily with the construction and demolition material. That's okay. where the real money is. The MSW, I can't imagine they could amount to very much. A ton of trash is a lot of MSW. I know. So, so, so sort of what I'm, I'm scratching my head here, and I'm saying, you know, should we say to Barbara Ann, as the gatekeeper, if you will, kind of appropriate here, right? <laughs> <laughs> we said to her that in, in bagged disposal fees, she had the authority to waive, pick a number, with, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever, in total, whether that made any sense or not. And you guys just work it out. And, and they, the requests come through her. You tell her, hey, that guy used $3.97 and take it off the account. I don't know. 
Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we did yep. have a, a discussion about this in department heads, and, and this is kind of a, um, a, a difficult one because I, you know, the hoarding issue has a lot of negative ramifications to it, not just obviously to the individual, but to the neighborhood and, okay. and to the town overall. So I think anything the board would do, I, you know, it would be my heavy suggestion that we don't just let any group come to us and say, oh, I'm cleaning up my yard, can I have a discount? That, that's going to get us in more, more trouble than it's going to be worth. But I think having some vetting process of, you know, getting the recommendation maybe from both Link and from, from Barbara Ann to see and then present only those that are making a valid effort to clean up a, a hoarding situation or, or something, some kind of restriction. I think Link has that's, the right idea that that's if, the if recommendation we, that Link made to you folks in that letter was basically the customer would come to us or at our gate would come to us and say I'm making this up zero 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 Queen Anne Road um, has an issue and we would like to help them so then Kevin our social services coordinator Rick or myself would go out to that property and physically see it with our eyeballs and say yes it's absolutely worth it call link he says yes it's okay and they go through or no it's not it's a construction stuff and they got to pay for it and hire someone I, I, the Caleb Chase fund isn't that for utilities right. both of them are for utilities one is a trust so I'm not sure we could just change it I don't think so, yeah. uh, and so I, I I'm not sure that the Caleb Chase is really the place where somebody would go for this you know, being utilities, one being a trust, et cetera. This is, this is Barbara Ann calling Lincoln saying, stand yeah. at the gate and waving through uh, for this one. Well, That's Mr. Chairman, I, I wanted to kind of finish the thought. The other thing, under your own policy, the only one that can waive it is the licensing authority, meaning you guys. So my, my part of this is why not have a professional recommendation made by staff for those cases that are unusual that that do serve I think under the policy a, a valid public purpose so that way we have some restriction the other thing to the to the point of you know we are trying to run a, a business without having fee structure go too crazy that it wouldn't go to to zero on it but we would we would basically just charge what we would have to cover to, to cover our costs for the tipping fee for the material coming in so it would be a substantial discount and one that I would suggest only being done on you know very limited cases but it would help out uh, the situation which I yep. think is important but it's only help. trash right it's not not C and D we're talking about Linda question I know that when we all get our transfer station tick uh, stickers they have the drivers the uh, license of the plate on it is there a way that we could ask the at our gate program to buy one transfer station ticket uh, a sticker and it could be in a laminated something or other and so that they would be able to use that one sticker and pass it around to say five vehicles ten vehicles is that is that a possibility they want that with your consent anything's a possibility um, I think if we're talking MSW solely trash runs uh, as Barbara Ann has described I have no objection as long as she vets it and says it's a valid business purpose and you and you folks delegate that consent to her I have no no objection over that the request came to me because they were doing something with demolition and some shingles that are very heavy $125 a ton they spent three hundred four hundred dollars and they were upset about that and we pay you know we pay okay, a substantial so, so I, I think it's pretty clear I, I'm thinking it's pretty clear we don't have any interest in municipal solid waste I mean uh, demolition stuff right but trash I have trash. no objection they, they could bring in uh, pick up after pick up and honestly it's a no. blip on the radar screen I don't I, I'm saying that you but, but I think if, if Barbara Ann vets it and then somehow sends it to us and we just and we just put them on the agenda and approve it this isn't something we want to see every week is it no the only difficulty is the last statement you just made it it's often um, a, a timely it. thing of when these guys are available I can't say well we have to wait until two weeks when you go to summer schedule from now um, because they won't be available two weeks from now Linda request or, or a proposal uh, I hear the CDL part and the the waste you know the regular household waste can you put together maybe a policy not a policy a procedure that would say XYZ this is what is going to have to be done 
Board of Selectmen approves it and then therefore delegates to Barbara Ann the decision making process that does that make sense because I think have because I agree with you that if <coughs> if somebody's available with the truck today they're not going to be available in two weeks this right. stuff it's, is very it's not like Caleb the Chase fly. that way we do get Caleb Chase in screen it do everything we need to for you and then you get it and vote on it, it unfortunately it isn't like that it's kind of that you know act while today Iron top. Does that make sense to the rest yeah, of the board? Works for me. Mm -hmm. yep. a, a put together a quick procedure. We we'll can vet take it that from um, and then give you Link's authority to do that. Close yeah, Michael. To yeah, I, and in in the uh, letter from the At Our Gate program, they specifically it doesn't say it says either physical or financial. So in, in some of these cases, they can pay. They just can't get it there. Mm -hmm. So. I would imagine in the vetting process we can figure out the ones that can pay and then the ones that can't pay. I think as far as, the, yeah. as part of that process goes, then we as a board could, could potentially approve the discounted rate. But I, I think in, in reading Link's letter, um, I think that precedence is, is a big one and, and anything that we do to change, change that we should think uh, long and hard about changing his, his rates. I think if he supports the discount, we can support the discount. The rest should be done on a one-to-one -one basis. I just have a question. Does it start always with a nonprofit rather the, than a neighbor? The At Our Gate program is a nonprofit. I know that. that and that's is. the only program we would allow to do this. But what, well, I'm not exactly sure of that. If somebody else shows up and it's behind the gate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and they do the same exact thing, mm -hmm. you're obviously going to do the same exact thing you do with but I think I think in I those would come cases, back to you before I would do well, that. Well, I think in those cases, she's referring to at the gate or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm just, but I'm talking about Preserve. another church in town, oh. for example, deciding that oh, gee, that's a great idea, yeah. and we want to do it too, and I can't see us picking one group over another. Well, you could that's also you could also limit the number of uh, occasions you do this or something. I mean, that's possible. I think yeah. yeah, think about that because I I think if you say one church. Our church affiliated group can do it, but another one can't. Right, no, I agree That's, with you. you know, I the press is going to be terrible, so maybe <laughs> you think about how many times during a month and therefore have others as well be able to do it. There is no one who's ever come forth in 16 years who's offered. If they did, I certainly would entertain it. Well, Lou is thinking out there now. He's going to be done with Albert House. He's going to start collecting trash, I can tell. <laughs> there, there are, um, to answer your question, um, Angelo and Linda, there are groups that charge a very large sum of money um, that will do clean outs and clear outs and so on and so forth. They will even actually um, put a lien against your home if you so chose. So um, I wasn't trying to be sarcastic, Angela, in my answer. It's just no one has ever offered other than this group. And we certainly would entertain anyone with equal backgrounds, equal, you know, no charging anything to the customer, that. you know. Um, not, I would not have any problem doing that. Okay, so so we good. Barbara Ann's going to put some kind of policy or proposal together for us and come back as a mm -hmm. procedure. Procedure, as okay, to policy. whatever. Procedure. Give us some words that we can say yes, we approve that or whatever. Or we'll change the words for you. <laughs> We're good at that. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate all your interest in this program, by the way, and I, and I do agree it's a problem. I mean, it's a you see it every day. We don't, but I mean, it's it's a problem. I just would like to be able to have Harwich, if we have, uh, you know, a even incy amount to be able to get somebody cleaned out, and as Linda alluded to, you know, neighborhoods looking a little bit better. We do a lot of other programs that help with rehabbing houses, yep. but nothing to clean them out and nothing to clear them. So, thank you for hanging thank around you. this long thank meeting, you. by the way. Thank you. So. Mr. Chair, one last thing: Lee, you're talking cleanouts and so forth. Leaves and yard debris are free, right? Yes. They get to bring that to us free, and we compost it. And, and try to give the compost away. So a lot of what they're talking about is free. The MSW, I don't think, was the intent of the letter or why this actually came to me. This was something to do with some construction activity, which is problematic and expensive. If we're excluding that, I have no issues whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, moving on. <coughs> Excuse me. Under new business, uh, B, Proposal Update Committees. Janelle. Yeah. Um so this is Janelle did this? This is yes. Janelle. It didn't have a name on it. Oh, well, next time I'll put my name on it. I'm sorry. Um, so what, you know, when we were assigned our 
liaison positions last week, I went through the website with a fine tooth comb and I found that there are um, six inactive committees listed on our brand new website, which I don't think is very user friendly for our community, and seven committees that were not assigned a liaison. So I wanted to discuss um, what to do with these committees, whether some of these can be disbanded, um, even joined together. I know there was some question whether even there were two committees that um, we were assigned to. I think Mike has bikeways and I have trails. Can they merge into one committee? Um, so I just wanted to go through it with a fine tooth comb and you know, I just think it's really important when we have a brand new website up that everything is um, active and we don't have listings of a inactive committees and um, you know defunct things. So har the, for instance, Harwich Center Initiative Committee, I imagine that was years ago um, that that committee formed and it's currently inactive. However, with all the activity with the Albra House, Never would know. it would we want to reactivate that committee or you know merge it with um, I don't know, historic? So there's a lot to think about here, but I just think it's important that I, I think that committee sort of ran out of gas, if I could use that phrase, is my recollection, and they sort of just stopped, you know, it's one of those things. We now also have an overlay district now in Harwich Center. Right, right. So I'm not really sure they need that. So okay. And then recycling committee? I'm not sure what that was. Was that, you know, back in the nineties when uh, the recycling center was formed, so perhaps? I so I know the answer to that. Recycling uh, committee. Do we have a recycling committee? Did you ever have one? Yeah, we had one that dispersed, I'm gonna say, in the very early two thousands once we moved to our current location. Right. We really have no need for one at this point. I don't believe so. We try to make recycling easy and convenient for the residents. Yeah. So that would be, I know the board is the um, governing body that has to disband yep, these committees. Sure. Yep. Um, police station building committee, of course. That was when they built. were building. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's gone, right? We don't need that. Technology, however, that would be probably something, being that IT was first on our uh, um, goals list, uh, that might be something we want to reconsider. You know, do we want to have some input from the public and actually form a committee that can help us um, come up to speed with broadband and everything that we need to get to that next step? If I remember that one, we couldn't find people. Willing. After a while, we couldn't find people to serve. Yeah. So I think it's just sat there, but I, you know, I think it's worthwhile doing. But mm -hmm. there ought to be a way to revive it. And if we are talking about trying to get some younger folks involved, I think that's a prime area where they should have an interest, I would think. But can, I, can I make a suggestion? Uh, about two or three years ago, uh, when the uh, Cape-wide uh, Line open was cape. Open, open cape was coming through. We put together a committee of several town people and the chamber people, and uh, many of the people had businesses in town. And that committee worked, I thought, extremely well. Uh, and what they did is they evaluated all the technology uh, pieces that we had and needed, and what they needed, and how uh, broadband would be important or not important to them. And they came up with some very interesting uh, decisions or suggestions. That data still exists, which we should probably pull out. But that st kind of committee w I thought was very successful uh, working together on, on technology. Uh, by the way, their, their basic understanding was that we really don't have a great need for broadband. What we need is for basic technology because we're not close to the broadband stuff. That was basically the, the, the line. And now how things change so quickly, huh? Okay. So maybe we want to revisit that one for sure or think about that? I would think so. Um, Disability Rights Committee, I, there were, it was inactive. Yeah, but aren't we required to have one, Chris? I think we are required to have one on that in human services, I think, as well. And generally we just see those in and the, the disability rights committee there are two people on it and uh, we haven't been able to get any volunteers so that they could have a quorum in a meeting oh really yes because I was the uh, uh, for a while I was the liaison to that committee and then one person became ill and moved off two people didn't re-up so that left two out of five 
Um, so I can tell you. I that. wonder if the website is is saying that it's inactive though, because I was I was pretty diligent about listing these in the proper category. I'm sure so it we says it's inactive at this point. Yeah, but we do but have. It shouldn't a, be. But it shouldn't be. Right. But I think on the list of open positions, Disability Rights Committee is listed, and it says need three people. Okay. So um, the last two we want to retain. Yep. Um, so I think the first one is um, sort of up in the air question. The second two recycling and police station building looks like they should be yeah. disbanded. And technology, I would, I think if it's not going, we should, we should figure out what we want to do to reactivate it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And um, so the next seven um, did not get a liaison assigned to them. And um, I also just wanted to find out what the purpose is. Like, there's three Pleasant Bay committees. Um, does wastewater implementation trump those three? Um, you know, now that we're moving into uh, sewer issues, um, we, are these, do we need these committees anymore? And, you know, being a newcomer, I, I certainly bow to your expertise. I would, um, actually, I'd ask Alan Thompson about the Pleasant Bay stuff, because he's been involved with all of that. Those are also four town committees. Yep. They're not yep. particularly our Harwich committees. Okay. So they they ask for representatives to right. you know the the people of the towns around Pleasant Bay. So where it says Alliance, that's you know Bruce Orleans, Chatham, and Harwich. Okay. Okay. So those aren't our committees to either disband or do anything to. But but Alan could tell you whether they're active or not. Yeah. And I think we need to also uh, give information on the website that those are in alliance with the other towns because I didn't know that. Um, I was going to say, I think Alan Thompson just had a meeting the other day. For, I don't remember which group, but it was Pleasant Bay. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, they are, yeah. they are still active. Mm -hmm. yeah. And being that they're alliances, they don't require <coughs> liaisons, I imagine? I think just we, yeah, we haven't traditionally had liaisons to them. We have appointments to them, typically. Yeah, we have an appointment to them. Yep. So maybe it. they could even be like kind of singled out on the list of boards and committees, maybe have a whole new topic that says alliances. And then that way it's not confusing for the general public, um, nor me. But also, I, you know, I've never understood why they have three Pleasant Bay various alliances and there isn't just a Pleasant Bay alliance, period. Right, right. I've never understood that one. Quite frankly, the expert on the, everything Pleasant Bay is Carol Ridley, so. Yes, she would Carol know. Ridley would be able to probably you know give you. Carol? That's I right. don't know her. Okay, Carol Ridley is um, all about Pleasant Bay, so. I uh, she's give you her contact. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I imagine the Wireless Communications Regional Committee is also something with many towns. Um, Designer Selection Review Committee. That's whenever we design a building. Okay, that doesn't fall under the architectural. We need no. We need we need someone to design it. That's usually an AE firm, not necessarily an arch, not, not necessarily the architect itself, but the engineering firm that's going to do the work. But I you see. know, but so. you know what's interesting, Peter, is designer selection review committee. When we do have a a building to be built, the police station figured out, put out the R the, the police station building committee put out the RFPs to hire the architect. Da 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 da. Why we have a separate design selection review committee? Because the contracts come to us. Could we form a committee if we're ever going to build another building? Could we form yep, a committee form then? It then. Yeah, form absolutely. it then. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And town forest committee. What, the, what, what is that? Call Link Thatcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that mean Here's that, the that tree it exists for a long time? No, I don't know. There are two tree wardens. I think we have two people on the town committee, at least on the forest committee, at least tree wardens. Okay. And we don't know what they do. What yeah, they worry about trees. <laughs> <laughs> so does the conservation department. <laughs> no, but you know, is someone is someone. I mean, I, I know in the past someone has an issue on 28 with a tree or something and whatnot. They'll they'll help them determine whether. The state needs to cut it down, or we got to do something with it. Or wow, there's a committee for that, huh? No, it's a tree warden. Okay, so but tree this tree wardens, I think, are part of this so-called committee. But so yeah, we should, actually we should yeah. explore that one 
Yeah, I don't know. In, in one of my previous towns, actually it was the first time ever that the, they had a tree forest committee and they actually did uh, pruning and they harvested trees. So uh, it was actually a kind of an active forest management, management plan. I think that was a requirement that if you had a town forest, you have to have an active forest management plan. Uh -huh. A lot of times things just now get deferred to the tree warden, who's probably Link or... Uh, I think it's Link. I think it's Link. Somebody down in DBW, but... You also may want to check with Amy in conservation yeah. and see, because she would be one that works with them, you know. And then Michael can tell us all about the dead trees along the bike trail. Right. And, we're, and I'm on the trails committee, so that I'm there sure that we'll have some. There you go. Okay. Tree warden, Mr. Lincoln Hooper, we just uh, appointed him for another year earlier this meeting. And also Norm Clark oh, is, a tree, is, a, is a forest warden. Is it Thatcher? And they were both here tonight. Right. So Norm, so Chief Clark is, the, is a forest warden, but Lincoln Hooper is a tree warden. Okay. So, so, so my out. suggestion here is why don't we why don't we dig a little deeper on some of these things? Come back and let give us a little matrixes. Keep active. Get rid of whatever. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do. We just don't want to offend anybody <coughs> that thinks they're on the committee when we disband it. If you know you what I mean. You probably work with uh, Sandy in the office. She has a pretty good tally yeah. of yeah. what's what in terms of that. Okay. okay. And then the last part was. Um, just want to throw out some ideas of how we can get more people involved in these committees and um, you know one of them obviously is the website keeping it up to date and um, letting people know what vacancies are there um, it would be great to have one sheet that's a PDF that people can print right from the website so they don't have to keep clicking on individual committees because they're you know that list is very very long I didn't count how many but there's got to be 30 um, so just another website idea which I have brought up in the past as well um, so that people could like for instance some of the the people that I know at um, Little League and at, that I've ran into at the park playing with kids are like you know I'd really like to get involved with something but my time's limited can you just give me one page that I can see where everything is so I got a page in the office last week but it was outdated so just um, I think that would be a great way to start attracting citizens um, and then each individual committee I think it's important that we suggest that perhaps they have um, some of them if they if they can have some more conducive hours of meeting rather than 8 a.m. on a Friday or 10 a.m. on a Wednesday if if possible I think that's really important the, the problem with the times usually well the times are set by the um, the boards themselves folks on the committees and sometimes people volunteer for a committee because it's at a time and other times they can't volunteer because it's at a time committees do change over time committees can change their their day and time of their meeting whenever you know it, they need to or want to but typically i've found and i think i'll just speak about real estate and almost space committee i think there were some people that their only window of opportunity was on a you know it had to be eight in the morning or something because they're all going off to work and they squeezed it into the beginning of the day i don't know Mm -hmm. So, but you know, those things can be changed if the board agrees it wants to do it. We don't set the times for people. We don't set the days they meet. We just um, we we encourage them to meet. <laughs> right. So it, it is hard, especially as these boards get in the you know seven people or something like that. It's hard to get a mutual time. You know. So, Peter. But yeah. as liaisons, it's something. Just a quick um, <clears throat> comment to Janelle that might be helpful to that kind of person and anybody else for the committees I'm not looking for Sandy or Ian to do more work I don't know who would do it but Cape Cod volunteers who comes to our building um, once a week is a wonderful clearing house for all volunteers Cape wide and they'll do the quarry check they do all the background that kind of thing and they have a very very user-friendly website so if we could take all the 15 positions that we're looking for volunteers for for boards and committees and pop them into that website, we might get somebody. Mm, Just need to be town idea. residents. You have to live here. Have to live here, so we would have to be carefully put that up. Car which we would want. Yep. Yeah. But we'd have just to make sure that that gets just Harwich. The, yeah, the other thing is a minimum, you know, if you even pass out to people, um, uh, the citizen activity form, even though it lists, I think, all the boards and committees that 
potentially there. It doesn't tell people which ones are open or have openings or whatnot, but at least at least they can see, hey, there's something on here I might be interested in, I should check out further. So. And we do keep track of people who are, have an interest in a committee. There might not be an opening, but they, you know, Sandy does keep track of who has shown an interest in that committee and that when an opening comes up, she can say so-and-so has shown an interest. Mm -hmm. So we can go after them. Good. The, uh, the book that is handed out at town, around town meeting time about the, the entire town. Little the annual report? Annual, annual report. report. Mm -hmm. That has a page at the back that has a listing of all the committees also. And it has the application. It has an application. Mm -hmm. That's the best book to give out, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a wealth of information. Of course, we probably think it's too important because it's got so much stuff. If the, if the uh, sheet that we have down in the uh, town and, uh, administrator's office is not up to date, we should get that up to date as soon as we finish this, reprint it, and get it going. Yeah, you know, I would think That's it's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press on the interview committee to, to make sure you work with Sandy and keep our list so we'll, current. We'll, we'll yeah. wait for you to get back. But I mean, as far as what openings are around and whatnot, that, yeah. that's a good focal point for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's it. Thank okay. You. Uh, last item on our new business, uh, new police chief contract. Uh, we The board has voted um, to approve the police chief's contract uh, with the stipulation that um, he undergoes a successful uh, background check. That's standard routine. Um, but we, we reached that agreement uh, and, and uh, signed that document this evening. So assuming he signs uh, July 20th will be his start date okay town administrator's report thank you mr. chairman uh, I do have several this evening I'll try to work my way through them as quickly as possible uh, the first one I have is uh, we have received some uh, information from uh, Cape Cod Commission uh, apparently the 208 plan uh, certain elements of it have been adopted uh, so they are doing a uh, information meeting. That information is uh, going to be, they call it a Cape-wide uh, WMA meeting. It's Wednesday, uh, June 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Monomoy Regional High School over at 75 Oak Street. Uh, if you go onto their website, they are asking for a, uh, if you're planning to attend, to, to let them know. I did pass that out to board members so you have the, um, the link. And that is open to the public, I assume? I presume it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we should we should announce that on Wednesday when we do our meeting on Wednesday night. Can we put it on the website too? Yeah. Yeah. And I also think, if I remember reading the paper today, the governor signed off on the yeah, on the two eight. Yes, so that's what I yeah, think you're going to update this, on. I think, yeah. <coughs> the uh, we did receive, and I, I had a chance to kind of look through a uh, open meeting law complaint in regards to the uh, the, the wastewater moment. Uh, the chair has taken a stab at putting together a uh, response. What I'll do is kind of put that into the format as uh, required by uh, the process uh, by the attorney general's office that does the administration on this. Uh, so uh, we did receive the complaint. We have 14 business days, so we can actually probably do it. I, I counted it up. We could do it at the meeting on the 29th and still have. I think it's the 30th. Or the uh, the first is the 14th day. 14 so or 15 days. We have 14 days. Okay. It was 14 it's business, business days. days. Yeah, it's business, business days. days yeah. yeah. So we have we have some time. So just so the board's aware, I, I think quite honestly, I, I had several of these complaints at my uh, last place, and I think just the the, the person took offense at um, that it was a little bit too simplistic, just saying wastewater moment. Well, what does that mean? So I think being more descriptive of it, like we did at this agenda, is probably going to address that issue. Uh, plus, just thinking about it, we, we have a lot of information on the on the website, so if people go and look at the agenda, they can get even more information. So I think it's more of a uh, just a question of uh, education. Also, um, just so uh, the board's aware, uh, we have had a uh, request for a time extension in regards to uh, from uh, Robert Auer on the uh, the Witchmere Harbor project. They're doing the uh, the the um, the pier and that uh, they were delayed uh, because of the uh, cold winter they could not bring the uh, the barge that needs to do the uh, I guess the pounding of these pilings into place oh, uh, right so they, they were delayed uh, so there is going to be some uh, limited access uh, to that we anticipated that it would be uh, around June uh, the shellfish lab and the uh, 
the, the fleet, the fishing fleet, will have access by June 13th. Probably everybody else will have uh, access uh, closer to uh, July 20th. So they are they are delayed, but we are making arrangements to try to minimize. So Chris, those you just clarify. You said with the shellfish folks would be June 13th. Did you the say? shellfish in in the uh, the fleet will be um, will be able to access. In so a they have it now. Fashion. Yeah, actually, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, they have access now. Okay. The commercial fleet is uh, June 22nd, yeah. okay. and then the uh, July 20th for the. Um, yeah, I just realized 13th yeah. is already. Passed. Yeah, we've already. Yeah, we've already done it. Yeah, thank you. The other uh, one that I wanted to mention is the uh, the fire chief had sent over a uh, a letter. Um, I just kind of paraphrase this, but there was a a a, bike, a, a bicyclist that had a, a cardiac arrest on the bike trail off of uh, Queen Anne Road. Uh, Deputy Chief Gagnon and the and the fire chief happened to be in the area, uh, but the, he kind of comments that it was nice that a uh, police officer was there. Uh, Chris Nickerson and and uh, Richard Baruby, I guess Boo as he's known, uh, from DPW happened by. They they got the posts out, and it was just kind of nice to see a coordination of uh, activity in which the police fire. Uh, and DPW, and there was apparently a, a critical care nurse that witnessed it and was able to render some assistance right away. So uh, it, he just wanted to point out that, uh, you know, it is a town that really does work well, um, you know, in, in terms of when, when you really kind of need it. So it was a good, good teamwork, which is really nice to see in, a, uh, in an organization. Uh, we have, uh, we have a, an agreement on the uh, with the um, the managers union uh, in town uh, the board earlier this evening did vote uh, on the management side uh, based upon the recommendation to support the agreement uh, they have done that the union has a meeting I think later on this week uh, to consider that uh, so presuming that the uh, the union will take an action if that's a favorable action uh, then we will have an agreement and I think as we had talked about um, earlier, that this will be one of the first times that all eight of the uh, contracts will be up to date. Not gonna be up to date for a tremendously long time. We'll start over in uh, July 1. I think we have six contracts. We have two that are already settled past July 1. Uh, but at least uh, we have uh, got those up to date. And fairly straightforward on the, uh, the proposal. Again, due to the kind of late hour, I won't go into specific details on it. But basically, it is the two percent consistent with what other uh, units obtained. On the, um, I did put in the package uh, a couple of pieces of material. We are doing the uh, community development on the uh, second floor. Uh, we have some dates for uh, Thursday, June 25th, to kind of complete the physical moving of folks uh, on that. And then we also have met with uh, representatives of HEA, the union to go over the mechanics of how we're gonna accomplish uh, some of the work duties. Uh, so one of the things the board voted the plan, but we was subject to negotiation with the union. Uh, so I am waiting to finalize uh, those negotiations with the union and have that implemented. But the physical changes will be done by the end of the month. And it's my hope that we will have uh, the, the kind of contract terms uh, hammered out in terms of uh, the job duties that, that have been assigned to people as part of that. Also, uh, we have, and I did list it because I had this a little bit earlier, at the uh, Finance Committee meeting, which I think is the same night, the 24th, uh, we do have a request for a uh, reserve fund transfer. At the community center, the uh, generator had a uh, significant amount of uh, just kind of damage done to it over the harsh winter months. So the, uh, the kind of the refit or the upgrade of the damage that was caused uh, is about 6,500. So obviously that was not planned and, and a reserve fund transfer is unforeseen or unplanned, um, I guess unforeseen activity. So uh, that is something that will be presented to the uh, finance committee. On, um, we did talk a little bit about cable earlier, so I, I'm not gonna get into too much into that. On the, uh, just two other ones, actually just one other one, I guess, on, uh, two other ones. On the, uh, we have a tentative meeting that we've requested of the board for uh, Friday, June 19th. 
We are doing a uh, band of bond anticipation notes that we do have to borrow money. I think it's about $2.5 million uh, to, to uh, take care of most of the town meeting activity for borrowing from last year. Uh, that includes also the money for the uh, Downey property. Uh, so make sure we have the ability to pay that uh, when that gets uh, squared away. Uh, so we do need the board to actually formally approve those, those bands. Yeah, we, we, set the, excuse me, we set that up at 8 o'clock on <coughs> Friday because next Monday we're not meeting, so I didn't want to drag you in at night. We really only need three board members. I mean, that's the essential thing to get a quorum. Right. So I'm assuming can we get, I can be there at 8. It, it'll take literally five minutes. So, so no, I haven't got a confirmation yet that that works for the financial advisor, but we'll we're working on that. Proposed to let us know. Yeah, let us know. Please. And then uh, just the last thing is on the uh, the selectman's office. Uh, the board had given me uh, some flexibility to do something with it, so we will be kind of taking the desks out and as part of the second floor reorg. Uh, those desks are actually a little bit more compact, so it'll help with some space issues. So we'll take the desk out. We will leave one desk in there and the table and set it up more as a meeting room. So the day of the 25th when we move upstairs, I thought might as well do it all at once while we have the DPW resources here. So the office area will be uh, changing fairly shortly. Still be dedicated for the selectmen. I, I haven't figured out any other agency that would be good to go in there. But at least we'll make it as a meeting space. Uh, so we'll have some greater flexibility with that too. And that uh, concludes my uh, comments this evening, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, Michael. Uh, Chris, just two things. The, um, I think it's important to note on that open meeting violation that in our agenda was what we talked about. You know, I think it was just kind of said that it was a, that he, that he took um, issue to the description. Uh, if you read the agenda, Peter was pretty clear what we were going to talk about, and that's what we talked about. So that was one. Number two on the, on the, um, the extension of the harbor yes. contract. The um, what provision has been made for the people that have moorings in that in that harbor? Because um, I, I did get one complaint, which I directed to you. Um, the person that holds a mooring in Witchmere was told to that he could put a uh, dinghy on the dock at Sacquatucket and row over to his boat. Um, John Rendon had had told him that that was the provision that was made. I don't know how long that provision was going to be. The dock yeah, separate. no, I talked to John. I mean, you know, one issue is that because the construction equipment is there, uh, there is limited parking. I mean, that lot really has limited parking anyway, but because the uh, the equipment to put in this material is, is fairly good size, it is very limited parking. So it is kind of a, a drop-off system, which is definitely going to be an inconvenience for folks. But in my conversation with John today, kind of going through that, again, the, we'll have access to the Shellfish Lab, we'll have access for the commercial fleet, and then if, if you're kind of familiar with that site, there's a, uh, a little, I think he was going to have a walkway down to the, um, to the water so people could get their dinghy and, and row out to their boat. So the big inconvenience is going to be that they're going to need someone to kind of drop them off because the parking is even more limited than normal. And what was the date on completion so they'll have a place to park? I think that that would be, um, well, the date on completion completion well, for will be uh, July 20th okay. will be final completion. But June June 22nd, he'll have uh, that temporary arrangement so people will be able to get there. Have you ever rode from Sacramento? Uh, just, just a question. Yeah, a long well, I, I thought it was kind of. Do, do you think John Auer would have some space at his place for to park? Uh, you know, to allow a couple of cars ha to have moorings to park, and maybe just row row from there, or the parking lot at the end by Stonehorse. Yeah, yeah by Stonehorse. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's really that's really John Hours. Question, I guess, for them would be. Uh, you know, since he's working on the other piece, he right. might. You know, say four or five I think people. It's only could come park. up a few times, Chris, but the few people that have called seem pretty irritated. Well, unfortunately, well, if, if the project got delayed, well, you know, the weather and everything, I think that I, I'm sure that there's a, an inconvenience and an irritation level, but it's not like we prayed for 12 feet of snow. Nope. No, but, you know, people pay their mooring fees and they expect <laughs> yep. to use them. They, so they expect to use them. They expect to have to row from Sacatucket to Wichmere. Have you ever done that? <laughs> They're also required to have their boats on the mooring for 30 days, and a lot of people want to do it now. 
imagine he's going to make an exception for that as well. Me too. Yeah. All right. Anything else for the town administrator? So elections report so we can get out of here. Uh, remind everybody we have no meeting next uh, Monday, June 22nd, to start of our summer schedule. Uh, hopefully you'll all make the wastewater meeting on Wednesday, this Wednesday, June 17th at 6 p.m. I expect it to be uh, very well attended. Uh, we did mention the bond anticipation note meeting on Friday, and we did mention the uh, Cape White M M MWA meeting uh, next Wednesday the 24th. So that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything? Linda. Well, I was, I was going to give a dissertation. I went to the, but I won't because it's late. And I'm getting What's eyeballed here. What's the subject? Subject is I went to the uh, Buzzards Bay Coalition and the Koi Bay National Estuarine Research yeah. Reserve, and it was more than a message beyond water words that work. It was a seminar held Friday on basically how to position yourself to explain and educate and sell wastewater. And it was really is very interesting. I, I was I was somewhat disappointed that there was no one from our wastewater implementation committee there. It was just me, and uh, but it talked a lot about the target audience, the impression you want to make, how do you get your attention through conversion, and then how do you keep people. And I came back with a nice little handout as to how to do this. So I was thinking that I would talk to the chair of the wastewater implementation committee and at least pass this on but it was a very interesting seminar it was uh, you know I think one of the things that was probably the most interesting was we all think that oh we can send a mailing and we'll tell everybody everything or we'll put it on email or we'll do a, a Facebook page or an app or something all of them have like teeny tiny little response rates teeny tiny the thing that gets you your response rate is you call somebody up on the phone and you say, hey. And even that's only about a 15 to 20% response rate. So, I mean, it's, it's called, you've really got to tailor your message. You've got to figure out, you've got to get it out there in a bunch of ways. Uh, and it was, that was probably the most discouraging part is, is basically people don't pay attention. I mean, we went through a little exercise that said, tell me what was on the front page of whatever newspaper you read today, either newspaper or on the internet. Basically, the room went blank. They didn't remember anything. No offense, guys. You two newspaper people. And then it was, obviously. And then it was, what was the last ad you saw when you pumped gas? There's ads all over the gas pumps. Because people ignore all of this. There's so much out there that you just, psh, gone. You don't even pay attention to it. So that part of it was anything. But I'll get with the uh, chair. OK, thank you. And you can do all the stuff on Wednesday if you want to uh, deal with the wastewater thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope. We're adjourned. See you Wednesday. Anything emailable, Linda? <laughs>